I like Cheeky. I think he's pretty good. They fixed him. Like his captain yeah. ability is kind of kind of fucking strong. So they did a good ass job with him. If you get him at limit break plus, yeah, level limit break one fifty. Yeah. Yep, 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 yep. If you do all the good goods, he's a yeah. He's gonna be real good. Gonna right. finish off my expansion. Yep. I'm gonna I'm gonna do it. Good content. I'm a nerd. <laughs> Straight content type beat. Oh yeah, facts. Uh, I like what they've been doing with the six pluses. They're good. Yeah, six pluses are incredible. Goaded. It's gonna be a tough category this year. Oh yeah. Dude, that's gonna be nuts. It's gonna be tough to pick out the worst six plus at the super evolution of this then year. Then again, depending on what Uta gets. Oh, <clears throat> then again, no, right. I don't like that because like didn't Yamato win last year? Yes. She didn't really deserve to win it, but... No. Because I feel but, like uh, best six plus it, should be, like, the character who got, like, the best improvements, you know? I was going to say, if, if they do, like, another Yamato with Uta, I, I wouldn't even put her on to the category. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, we'll have a chat about it. Like, I will... I'll, I'll Like, I'm not going to... Because I know you guys want to be kind of, like, not in the loop for the award show, in, in a sense, at least, like, not knowing what the, like what everything is exactly. But, like, when it comes to, like, closer to the date, yeah, we'll have a conversation about what we want, what we want to, what we want to do here. Yeah, Yamato won. Yamato won it um, 45.7% of the vote. Jesus. Second was Dex Sabo. I don't know if I agree with that anymore. I think Jermu fucking deserved it more than anything. You know, oh, honestly, yeah, Jer- that was my pick. Yeah, yeah. Jermu was, 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 was an elite 6 plus. Should I have V2 Mihawk in the worst six plus of the year? Oh. But yeah, this one this one's gonna be way more competitive. Yeah, I think so they're, too. They're all they're all amazing. Plus it's not based on dinky nominations, it's based on literally everything. So it's gonna be I would a... say based on how much use the unit has had since their six plus, Katakuri would probably be the best. But I think in terms of an actual unit, I think I like Kruzan the most. I would say Kuzan right now is the best six plus of the year as well. I would agree yeah. with you. He's very good. He's Pyrumble kit's amazing. Yeah. He's just super dangerous. Like he's a very, very good unit now. And I think that's kind of what needs to occur. Is that the unit just needs to become really good. And maybe not viable in like not not that not viable is the wrong word, but maybe not like, oh, they're like the best legend to use in PvE content. No, no. As long as they're good as an all round unit now and they yeah. can be used as an option, I feel like makes makes do for a very good um very good six plus. Mm-hmm. Oh, We're not here to talk about that today, though. What's going on, Ooh. guys? Welcome back to episode seventy-four of the Good Great Perfect podcast. Now formally retitled the Tower Fantasy Podcast. <laughs> we're all Tower oh, Fantasy man. nerds. Yeah, we're all on that. Hi, we've hi, all... hi. <laughs> we've all been in the mine. <laughs> it's uh, it's it's pretty fun, at least right now. Mm-hmm. That's that's right. But before we get into it, you have the usual suspects: myself, Flame, and Todd. Knight is off finishing up his exams, and he's moving, so he will be MIA today. So, all the best tonight on his exams. And, you know, he's, yeah, he's he's he'll gonna, smash it. Yeah, that he's man, gonna smash it. That man, that man's gonna destroy. He's gonna he's exam. gonna do an any percent speed run of his exam and <laughs> upload it to YouTube. It's time, you know. So, uh, but no, shout out that tonight. But uh, yes, another non Treasure Cruise related episode. Although the intro will be us talking about Treasure Cruise, so you know, make of it what you will. We have a couple of topics we're going to talk about today, mainly Tower Fantasy, as I mentioned. Probably a little bit of Pokemon sprinkled in there, and obviously the latest One Piece chapter, and I guess whatever else pops up during the conversation. Without mm. further ado, gentlemen, I will ask the usual question: How is everyone going? What have you all mm. been up to? What's the what? How's life popping? Um. Yeah. Life's been going okay at the moment. Um, my uh, well, recently we had a a death in the family, which oh. wasn't the best. It was uh, my grandmother's brother, who I've actually never met before, mm. so I didn't really know anything about him, to be honest. Mm. Um, but you know, like I don't feel like I, I have to go to the funeral in this upcoming week, but it's of like I, I don't feel like sad about it. I'm yeah. more of just, about just like I'm just like feel bad for everyone else that like yeah. kind of knew him. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm going to have to go that, that and just support the family and stuff like Naturally. that. No, best thing to do. 
100%. Um, but no, outside of that, everything's been going pretty decently well. Tomorrow, as of recording this video, which will be Sunday, mm -hmm. going to the football. It's going to be a huge game for us this week. Yes, Last yes. game of the season. Basically, uh, if we win, we make the finals. If we don't, we're out. So, uh, <laughs> so simple as that. Gut <sighs> rate. It's, <laughs> it's going to be a It's going to be, and it's, and it's against uh, the our biggest club rival as well oh my god it's even they're, bigger they're than predicting <laughs> ninety thousand people jesus uh, stay safe in those streets my friend <laughs> yeah it's it's gonna be a crazy day tomorrow it's gonna be chaos is what it's gonna be yeah but that's good that's good All right yourself flaminator what's 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 going on i actually got some good stuff going on Ooh, oh, looks all good. right so um I'm actually in position to be getting promoted at Whee. my job as supervisor. There we oh go. God. Yep. So I'm doing big, big money moves. Let's That's go. That's it. Um, we also are going on a double date tomorrow. E, me and Flame yeah. together on a date. Let's go. It's finally happening. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. Yep. laughs> Be there, we're gonna record it. No. Yeah, that's what I mean. Did you be post show <laughs> after extra? We're gonna have Todd, Todd and Poppy in the back with the newspapers watching, and <laughs> watching, watching, <laughs> watch us through. Let's go, it's time. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to that. That'd be good, um, but yeah, I mean, other than that, I've just I've just been chilling. Um, been playing some Tower of Fantasy, some tough, um, yeah, some tough, and I've also been playing Xenoblade 3. Oh, okay been surprisingly really really good i have a lot of good things to say about that game um, i did yeah. see one of the people i've like one of the probably the first people i ever subscribed to have you have you guys ever heard of chugger conroy yep yep that, oh that gee is, that is actually my favorite youtuber yeah he's incredible like he's he the, the consistency in content is insane right and the quality has always been amazing. But he, I think, put out a tweet saying that Xenoblade Chronicles 3 is better than Xenoblade 1. Yep. So a quick quick little Xenoblade lore. Um, most people, most people like, before the third game, um, favored the first one over the second one. The, sec <clears throat> the second game is really good, too. But they kind of, like, a lot of people, like, don't like it because, like, um, mm -hmm. they, like, kind of animate it out. And, like, there's, like, a lot of, like, you know anime girls with like the the anime trope of like big tits and whatnot and so yeah. they kind of like, threw them off in xenoblade 3 they kind of went back to the style of xenoblade 1 yeah but one thing that i like a lot about it compared to the both games is they kind of made it like persona and what i mean by that is like the character like the characters and like their relationships like they're so in depth like you feel like you're a part of the squad mm -hmm. and i love that so it's like you have a good story and then like you love all the characters so it's you just have so much fun with it Perfect i've never um, i've never played xenoblade at all but is it like um is it just like a roster of characters you play is there is it like a creative character that you play like how does that work okay so as far as all the xenoblade games if you ever do decide to play any of them you could play them in any order that you want um they're like little things here and there that like you would get if you played the previous ones but if you want to just play the third one, you could. Are they as like direct as... sequels? Not really. Like they they take place like in different eras, like okay. type, like type of thing. So it's like none of like the previous games characters are in the games, oh, but yeah. like like things about the worlds are like mentioned or like little Easter eggs that you can see and stuff. Um, as far as like the combat, it's different in all three games. Um, but mm -hmm. you basically have you know your roster of characters um certain characters are certain classes they specialize yep. in certain things um in xenoblade one like you had like um you had the monado that's the main character's weapon and like you kind of change between the elements of it and stuff mm -hmm. in xenoblade 2 you had um i forgot what they're called but basically it was like you kind of had like a like a jojo stand <laughs> yeah and oh hell yeah the stand stands behind you and like gives you like its power um and there was like a bunch of different characters that you can go through and stuff in xenoblade 3 though xenoblade 3 is actually the first game where you can um could control more than four characters like you have like six or seven characters on your team um and it's basically classes and all the care <clears throat> all the characters can utilize like a bunch of different classes 
and there's like legendary heroes which are mainly like characters that you meet in the story that you can gain their class and you can either use them on your team or you can actually put a specific character into that class and they can use it as well um but yeah it's i think it's by far the most diverse combat wise as well because there's so many different things that you could do in that game and is it like real-time combat or is it turn-based um it's real-time combat but like it's it's kind of like you control the character, you walk up to whoever it is that you're fighting, and then they start auto attacking. Like you don't okay. actually press anything. And then um there's like certain skills that you use and like you can like attack cancel and that makes you like pop the skills quicker. There's chain attacks, which in Xenoblade is where you actually do the most um damage. It's kind of like I guess it's kind of like a tandem attack <laughs> in one piece. Of right. <laughs> um but yeah, that's it, it. The combat could be a little stagnant, but like once you get the flow of it and you know you're into it, I don't really think it's a problem. Okay. Yeah, well, I definitely think it's worth checking out though at some point. Okay. Pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. What you I got going wanna, on? Poppington? Yeah. What's what's going on with Pappington? I'm, I mean, I was I was in shock because I just noticed I was just hopped on Twitter real quick and I saw that Bouncy Rush got top grossing in the jp app store which has just fucking blew my mind wait what yeah they just tweeted about it oh and I'm, my God. I'm actually like pissed off because how the fuck did optc not get top grossing at the jp app store yeah that kind of just released <laughs> it makes no sense unless i read I guess, it wrong i guess it's based <laughs> on um like the other games surrounding it and like if they had anything going on at the time yeah, I think so, but I'm, uh, I'm, I do apologize. I've like kind of derailed the conversation, but like, what? <laughs> How did that even happen? You know, so uh, I don't I'm know. Upset. It's a, I'm pretty upset too, to be honest with you, if I'm being real. But uh, you know, congratulations to the the bouncy rush homies. I guess you're getting you're getting a whole how many? I guess how many gems they're getting? A whole thirty gems. <laughs> Yay! Was that one summon? I don't know. How much is a summon in Bounty Rush, actually? Is it 30? It's 50. Oh, my God. It's not even a summon. Fucking Bandai, man. <laughs> it's not even a summon, bro. Oh, that's so rough. But uh, I've been I've been doing all right. Finished our next rotation in my in my, in my graduate program, so that's good. Uh, now I'm in a, a more of a planning and design assurance team. So a lot of like mm. system analyst work, doing a lot of doc review, doing a lot of like stakeholder engagements. So that's been a, a massive, uh, big difference to what I was doing initially. So that's been that's been a lot of fun. Outside of that, I've been uh, just living it up, doing my best. You know, li- trying to live my best life. Just trying to eat. I'm trying to eat a lot better recently. Like you mm-hmm. know, really counting calories again, getting getting back on that train, and and trying to gym and walk more, a lot more too. So uh. So trying to yep. really get back on that health kick, so you know, improve that health in that. Um, but otherwise, you know, it's just been the the same old, same old bullshit. I've been bullshitting on Twitter, I've been bullshitting in Discord, you know, the usual the usual things you expect from from my dumb ass. But <laughs> with that being said, let's get into the actual interesting topics of conversation. We're we're not important. What is important? To our fantasy lads. Mm. How <laughs> Yeah, the go for was, it. Uh, the hype was building up with this game. <laughs> Crazy. Was real. The hype was real for this game. I've seen a bunch of um the Genshin creators like get sponsored to uh to stream Tower of Fantasy as yep, well, which is yep. kind of funny. Yep. Uh and they had Twitch drops on it as well. A Twitch dro- cool. a, a Twitch drops still a thing that people can do or will they become a thing that people can do or is it only for certain like creator sizes or do you know how like that side of things um, works well i don't know if the, if you have to be like a certain size of creator to get drops but i know that like i just went to my settings and like it just says like there's like a toggle it's like do you want to enable drops on your channel and you oh. just turn yes and then when you do that like it comes up with a bunch of like a list of games right that, okay like, have it available so yeah right. tower of fantasy for the first like three days it was out had twitch drops wowzers okay and um yeah they had like what was it four million pre-registrations yep which is, yep. Which is absolutely bonkers. crazy yep so and it was also number one in 22 countries before it even released <laughs> oh my god brother 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 this game is insane and i don't know it's so like I was, I think we have like three different levels of like hype 
I think Flame was at the top. Then it was Todd. Then it was probably me who absolutely mm. knew nothing about it. But I kind of was like, oh, I'll give it a shot. I didn't hop on the Genshin train when it first came out. I never, I still haven't played Genshin to this day. But uh, I was definitely like, I saw Tower of Fantasy. I had no idea what it was going to be about, how it was going to function, how it was going to work. But then hopped in and I was like, it's kind of fun, actually. It's a pretty, uh, it's a pretty interesting. I mean, it, it's just, it just, it's an interesting dynamic, but it's, it's very similar to Genshin. Oh yeah, <laughs> it is. It's, it is. It's very similar to Genshin, and that's. Do you think they're going to get caught for plagiarism at all? Like in any facets or any laws that's going to pop? Because I think, I think something's it going on. It feels like they, they should be. I think so. They should be in trouble for what they're doing. Because that, like, it just gives me so many vibes of, of, of Genshin in a lot of ways. The UI uh, is yeah. the exact same. I'm not even going to kid you. The UI, like, like running around the world and has like, oh, push this button to dodge, push this button to attack. That's straight ripped from the Genshin files, if I'm being honest. But, uh. It's just, it's very similar in that kind of style. Have you seen all the drama that happened, like, when the game wasn't even out yet? Like, when oh, it was in China and stuff? Love, love some tea. There was, like, these trailers that they were releasing for the game that were to, like, like a promo material. Yeah. And what people had found is that, like, they literally copied the same um cinematography oh of another my. trailer oh so like God. there's like a scene of someone <laughs> jumping over a crevasse and then they put two trailers side by side for two That's completely so different funny. things <laughs> like one's one's promoing one game the other one is tower of fantasy and it's literally scene for scene the exact same game but it's just with tower of fantasy characters instead and they got caught <laughs> they, they came out saying okay we apologize and then what? there was <laughs> There was something else. Like, I think that they did it again with another trailer. It was, yeah, it was bad. That's mental. Yeah. That's, that, that's, that is crazy. That's mental. Because, like, is it, like, it's a very rickety slope when it comes to this kind of stuff. Because I feel like, I feel like they could have this, like, ongoing lawsuit that'll just go for, like, for ever and ever. Because remember when, like, there was that lawsuit between, like, uh, PUBG and Fortnite, how like PUBG was trying to claim that they were the ones that started the whole battle royale genre, and then they were like, "Oh yeah, yeah." They were suing Fortnite for copying the like the style and blah blah blah. Like, uh, it's uh, mm. I, I, nothing's gonna happen. So, I don't think so. Yeah. So I think that it's all in the clear. It's not even there's probably no value in them even doing anything like that at all. But before we kind of just jumped into a complete deep end, but Flame, you want to give us a breakdown on what Tower Fantasy actually is? So, like, well, I was gonna say Genshin. <laughs> <laughs> all, right, all right, moving on. To the next um, question. <laughs> so yeah, so Tower Tower Fantasy is like one of the new like Genshin like Breath of the Wild um, MMORPGs. It's free to play. You can play it on PC. It's on mobile. I personally wouldn't play it on mobile, but yeah. I do know it's cross. I, it's like cross progression. Yeah. So like, if you, if you like load it up on mobile, you can then also load it up on PC. Mm -hmm. Um, so story, I don't know if you guys have actually been like paying attention to the story. I kind of like zoned out a little bit, but <laughs> nope, the beginning I, I is spam the click button. I hit skip. As, soon, as far as possible. <laughs> the beginning of the story is actually very interesting. I was surprised because, like, like you just said, in most gacha games, they usually just blitz through this like story. I'm like, okay, yeah. I don't give a fuck. Like, I'm a fool. Yeah. But yeah, it's um, it's very um, the story is actually pretty good. Um, I actually like like um some of the main characters like Shirley and Zeke and stuff. Yeah. Um, I I don't like the Paimon ripoff. <laughs> I think it's oh, you're like me. Um, yeah. It's just a s -s 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 stutter. Yeah. No, Come on, man. No. <laughs> no, like, it's so bad. <laughs> it is so yeah. bad. Like, they didn't need. They really didn't need to do that. Like you just, you just didn't need to do that at all. Like it was fine. You didn't need it. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Um, well, I'm actually, give me one second because I'm getting a call. So all right, guys mm, all right. that's fine. Yeah, no stress. So, I'll, I'll take over. Keep but yeah, it's an open, open world MMORPG. Yep. And yeah, it's 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 pretty much get shit. Let's be I, real. I mean, I, I, it was it was a pretty dumb question of me to ask, to be honest with you. Like, it's it literally is like playing Genshin more or less. But yes, yeah, open but world, it's, lots it's of cool. different zones. Um, like the combat, I actually enjoy. The thing that's different from Genshin, you can correct me if I'm wrong, is that when you pull for a 
uh, for a quote unquote character, you're actually pulling for their weapon. Yeah. And that's the that's what you use in combat. And you can use that with your player made character, or you can like load in as the the character themselves and and like the the character that go, is associated with the weapon and and like use them to run around the world and stuff too. But yeah, um. That's- Exactly that's right. basically yeah. the premise of it the, the combat's very similar there's a bunch of different weapons right now i mean there's like what seems to be like six to nine ssr weapons at the moment yeah, i think it is yeah it's close to 10 i think I and there's like look four or five srs yep fuck the srs um yeah the srs <laughs> are bad all right I'm SRs back, are fucking bad um but it's a it's a very interesting kind of kind of game overall like it's uh it's been it has been fun so far i mean i'll speak from i guess from my inexperience of these kinds of games i didn't really expect too much going into it and i don't really expect too much like i don't i don't know how long i'll be playing it i guess is the question so i feel like the 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 like the new car smell like the sheen of the game will will rub off eventually and i feel like i'll just kind of be like oh this is kind of boring now so I don't like I don't know how they I, I get because the world's massive. There's always things to do. You can just keep fighting stuff, blah blah blah. But like, yeah, what does the end game look like? Exactly right. Like, do I just sit yeah. and farm? Like, like do we just go and like compete in like raids consistently? Like, I don't like I don't know how much enjoyment I have from clicking my like my mouse button, you know, for like fifteen minutes and then like, oh, we killed it, yay, and like <laughs> moving on. So like, I don't I don't I don't really know where my kind of enjoyment comes out of it overall Mm -hmm. but from what i've played so far i have had a lot of fun i like the i like the seamless mmo nature of it where there's just like a bunch of channels per world and you can just like jump into the same channel as someone and And like when there's like world bosses and stuff like that like oh not world boss but when there's bosses around the world you can just jump in with a bunch of people and go kill it and claim the loot and like yep I do enjoy that factor of like the MMO style because it allows you to play with friends like, and just whole hop in the same world and, and same like channel and just run around and go kill stuff and, and have fun. But I do agree with what Todd said. What does the end game look like for, for this game in, in the long mm. tail at least? And how does it maintain a player base the same that, that Genshin has or Genshin does, to be honest? Yeah. Yep. Exactly. There's lots of like little different game modes and stuff, which is kind of mm-hmm. cool. There's a um, lot of daily yeah. things to do. Like, cause oh, yeah. what I notice is like, you know how you have like this, um, what I'm going to call it is just stamina. Like mm. you can use that to go on a raid. You can use that to go on like a, like a wave clearing thing. You can do use that to like put these like weird little, like triangular prism things down around the map and like get rewards out of them if someone finds them. So it's like, there is a lot of ways to like spend your daily stamina and like go about the world and do your, your like, you kind of your, your daily routine. But uh, I don't know, like it's, I think right now for me, especially the sheen is kind of slowly wearing down, which isn't positive because it's only been out for like, what, a week now at most. So it's a, a mm-hmm. bit of a give and take there, I suppose. But I guess that's that's on me more than the game. So cause I know that the game is doing incredibly well as, as far as it seems. Yeah, so far it's been pretty successful. And it's get, so basically there is a level cap. Oh yeah. So, yeah. and that level cap updates either every every day or every 48 hours from now yeah so there was a point in time where it was a level cap and story progression was added with every every day but now they're at a point where it'll be one day you get two levels added to the level cap so you can level up a bit more and then the other day on the off days there'll be a couple more story chapters that you can yeah take on so they make it in such a way where no one's going to be super uber leveled up. Like, it's not like someone could get to like, like, I don't know what the max level is, but like, hypothetically, you can't just get to level a hundred in like a couple of days. Like everyone's going to be at that same level. Yeah. Um, which I think is kind of cool. Um, but like the thing about the game that's kind of overwhelming when you first start is like, there's so many different items, materials, (laughs) currency. It's It's super overwhelming. (laughs) Yeah. I was in the, I was in the podcast chat, like with these guys, I was like, what the fuck do I do with this thing? What do I, where do I spend this? What do I click on to do this? It's just like, there's, it's, it's like once, I guess like now that I, I kind of get it a little bit better, like what you need for what and what you like, what you do with what. But like day one, when I was just sat by myself playing, I was like, what the fuck is this yellow orb? What is this red orb? 
What the fuck are these black crystals? What the fuck is a purple orb? And that's just the currency, like, to pull. <laughs> and then you mm-hmm. have all these extra features, like, oh, you can get, like, a, a box that has... You can pick a, a particular item, then you use that item to, like, expand your weapon. But then you need another box to get a different item to expand that weapon. And if you combine three of these items, you can... It's like, oh, this is just... So much going on. You can it's level up the weapons, and then there's the matrices, the chips you can the add ma- on the nah, fuck! I hate games that do this shit. I fucking hate them so much. I hate matrices. Yeah, Why? It's cringe. It was, I, I like. I I understood the weapon system. I was like, okay, great. I just need to power up the weapon. Awesome. And then I was like, oh, you can add matrices. I'm like, what the fuck is a matrice? Because now there's like a different layer of strategy. Now it's like, oh, because if you yep. put three three of a kind of matrices together, you get an extra like bonus in the weapon. So every weapon probably has like a specific set of matrices that's best for and you have to chase though and ah oh. i mean i guess yeah. i guess that's what you're signing up and for then there's gear and equipment and then there's vehicles and then there's uh, relics and there's the yeah, it's just ah there's so it's much a lot it is a lot but i think that's kind of weirdly enough that's a positive as well if that makes sense because yeah. there's always something to like oh okay today i want to try to farm uh, I want to find the materials to like level up my king weapon, you know? So then you have a mission in that set and like, oh, I want to go get this vehicle. I want to go do like this relic or, or, or I want to go level up these matrices. So, like there's mm. always like a different kind of thing you can set yourself as a goal when you're playing. And I think that that plays into the game a lot more handsomely, but it is very overwhelming. Mm. It is. I have, a, I have a question for you guys. Go off. Okay. How do you guys feel about your created character do you guys actually use your created character or do you guys use like the the weapon sprites themselves mm. i was using the created character for a while then i switched to uh nemesis i had nemesis as my character Damn. and then i switched back i am using I my have, character i've always used my character i think like period i don't know just yeah. it just make I, I think it just makes sense i don't know for me to just use my character but uh yeah i think so I I like flip flopping between the two because yeah, like mm-hmm. I like my creative character, but then sometimes I get a little tired of looking at her, so I yep. switch back to all the other different people. Mm-hmm. That's a, that's also, a cool part I, of the game, I think, too, being able yeah. to do that. I was also gonna say I don't like how the characters' alternate costumes are hidden behind three dupes. <laughs> yep, yep. Do that uh, um, yeah, yep, 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 yep. Let's get into the the pulling system. So the pulling yeah. system, as far as I'm aware, is very similar to Genshin, if not identical if that makes it is sense. it is better than genshin in a couple of ways Go for it. yeah it is um so as far as the, the pulling system i think this only really applies to the first step itself because i've done over 10 on banners and it didn't apply afterwards yeah but on the standard banner and the event banner yep. on the first rotation you're guaranteed an ssr on the third and the eighth multi which yep. is great really good um uh, also, once you get up to 12 summons on whatever banner it is, mm-hmm. you can literally just buy the character from the shop, yep. which is great. Um, also, every time you do a multi, you get like, for example, like um, 10. It's called like 10 something. You get 10 whatever. If you're pulling on an event banner, if you don't get up to the like amount that you need to buy whatever it is that you buy, mm-hmm. all of that currency actually moves to the um, the standard banner. And mm-hmm. that's actually really good yep. because you can um you can buy dupes for whatever weapons that you already have. Yeah. Which is really good. Um and then there's other types of banners like we were just talking about. There's the standard banner, the event banner, there's also a third banner, which like ha- it uses like this purple currency. Yep. It has the lowest it is the lowest rate of all the banners. However, you could still pull um SSR characters on it, which is really cool. So, like, in OPTC terms, it's, like, imagine, like, you can pull, like... A, uh, a legend Uta. on the friend point pool. Yeah, a legend <laughs> Uta on the friend point pool. Like, that would be crazy. Um, I think, uh, and, like, Todd, you were mentioning that Carissa got a SSR on that yeah, she purple did. banner, which is insane. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. yeah, the rates, I've, I believe, are half, just under half or whatever it is, of the standard banner. So, it's really hard to get SSRs. Mm-hmm. Yep, and I, I've done a lot of those purple banner pulls. Yeah, so I haven't got the thing. Yeah. Um, there's also banners for the matrices, which <sighs> it sucks because <laughs> it's, I did pull an like SSR matrices today. I'll be honest, I, I did as well. 
<laughs> you know, I pulled one. I was like, what the fuck is this? I don't know what to do with this thing. So, uh. And the thing that's nuts about it is that, like, yeah, cool. We get the SSR matrixy, and you're guaranteed an SSR matrixy on four four summons, which is great. But yeah. you need three of them or four or no, I think it's two or four of them to activate the effects of the matrixy. Which Wait, is the SSRs you need two or four? It's not three? Oh, my. Oh, yeah, it's a bit different. I mean, oh, my days. <laughs> Yeah, I have I have Nemesis is uh, Matrix. Let me see. That's crazy. Because I think for SRs, like the purple ones, it's like two or three. So you can get the set effect yeah. after three, I believe. It makes yeah. sense, I guess, because SSR seems to be rare or whatever. But at the end of the day, though, for early stage stuff, you probably don't need to worry about like yes, getting the set. Yep. Like just having like high leveled matrices on a character Perfect. buffs the stats a lot. Yep. But yeah, if you're trying to do like min maxing and stuff like that, you you definitely want the set to get the ability. And that's not for me. Like that's that's for like if Flame makes a video and tells him what to do, I'll right, I'll do it. Or if like if like some sort of website says, all right, this is the best matrix you set up for for freaking Subasa, I'm like, all right, I'm gonna go get that. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, like I'm not out there trying to like figure this shit out because it's just it's not my forte, I suppose. Yep. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But um, uh, it's it's been good. Yeah, so according to the two SSR matrices I have, they're both a two and four piece set. Oh, radio. Okay, that makes sense then for SSRs. So that's not fun, but I mean, makes sense. Yep. What? Okay, so now we're in like the the pooling things. So how have your pools gone? What character? What SSRs have you picked up? Who's your favorite character to use right now? What? How's that dealio been going? Mm. Um. So for me, I started off my account with Nemesis and Coco. Actual cheater. Which, yeah, because so Nemes Nemesis and Coco are both two of the best healers. And then Nemesis is also kind of like a utility unit. Um, I did do a decent amount of summons, so I'm only missing three SSRs. Mm -hmm. I think I, I don't have Angela. I, I think her name is Huma. Yeah, Huma, yeah. And and there's oh um the the cat girl the one with the, the ring no oh, shiro oh, yeah, yeah those the are the three chakra. characters i don't have um i did pick up with my ssr selector um samir yes samir is great and works well with um <laughs> actually the best unit <laughs> nemesis yeah. and thankfully for me i actually have two dupes in samir damn Ooh. all right Ooh. Uh, i did buy them from the shop <laughs> that's fair enough yeah, but um, as far as who my favorite character is, I would probably say design wise is Angela, and I okay. really want her. But gameplay wise, I'm definitely gonna pick Samir. Nice. All right, you Todd, how'd your how's Pools your set going? Pretty decent. I've pulled a lot of the good stuff, you know, like I've pulled Meryl, Subasa. I pulled King the other day, which is crazy. Yep. On oh, no, it wasn't even a guaranteed step randomly got him and then for my ssr selector i got uh samir i i got a dupe for king because his level one ability is fucking cracked when you break mm -hmm. an enemy's barrier he like burns them for a crazy amount of damage Damn. it's super good mm -hmm. and then yep. um i also got nemesis and nice. decided to get a dupe of her as well did you so, get nemesis off her like raid up banner yeah or? on the raid yep. up banner yeah and um yeah, so my main core... So the thing about Nemesis, it's really good, and why a lot of people are saying that she's kind of worthwhile, depending mm -hmm. on, on what characters you have, mm -hmm. is because she's, like, one of the only characters that has a resonance effect. Okay. Yep. So it basically says that if you have Nemesis on your team and you have one other vault weapon, then she activates her resonance effect, which, like, gives you extra vault damage. Oh, and okay. not every SSR has it. Only very few of them have right. uh, an element resonance, and she's the one for vault element. Yep. So using that with Samir is yeah, a great combo. Because yep. Samir hits really hard, you get extra vault damage from the resonance. It's uh perfect. Yeah, it's pretty good. Yep. Go. Um I also did want to mention as far as limited characters like Nemesis, from what I understand they um they don't roll over to the neutral banner until about six months jesus yeah <laughs> so, i'm gonna miss out i'm gonna miss out um yep. and as i was gonna also say as far as the resonance characters 
mm-hmm. um, going based off the Chinese version. There's actually a few more coming out. But they're like the resonant effect for the other elements. Other elements, okay. yeah, like physical fire, etc. Yep. Um, I also like Meryl as well. So like I, so my main team is like Samir and Nemesis for the for the Vault Core, mm-hmm. and then switching that last weapon out for either King or Meryl for something to break shields. Okay. And a lot of people have been hyping up King, and I must say that in terms of breaking shield, Meryl is definitely better. The Ice Ooh. Sword Lady, she uh, yep. she's kind of cracked. Yeah, so the way that it's viewed is that Meryl is the best um the best shield breaker for PvP and mm-hmm. King is the best um PvE shield breaker. That's yeah, how that makes sense. Views it. Yeah, King definitely does like more actual damage, but in terms of breaking your shield, I feel like Meryl just seems to be more successful at that role. Yeah. That's from personal experience. And- I also realized when I was talking about it, I called Meryl Angela, but that's just because she literally looks just like this other character from a gacha game. <laughs> yeah, this guy, he's he's on it. But yeah, I was talking about Meryl. He's too he's too deep into it. Yeah. Um, for myself, uh, I've probably done a lot less than these two guys. My first SSR was Huma Uma Huma. That shield's kind of poggy. That's what I was. I was using that before I got King as my like fire weapon. And yeah, Huma's not bad. She's not bad. Use that one skill and transform it into like an axe kind of thing. It's It's so cool. Yeah. And I um I picked up King and Tsubasa as my other SSRs, and then I I did the same as these other guys. I I used uh, my free SSR on Samir. So my core is Tsubasa, Samir, King. I don't have any of the other SSRs at the moment. Um, It's a good team though. Yeah, it's it's just been fun. Like, you know, like Samir is fucking broken. I love using King like uh, completely and Tobias is just really good as well, like regardless. But yeah. it has been uh it's been a really it's been really enjoyable to just like play with those uh units. And like it seems like it's like I think I don't know, you guys uh, naturally you guys can always correct me if I'm wrong, but it seems like whenever you have enough to do a multi on the general banner, you should just do one. Yep. Yeah, there's like, no reason I, to save it. Yeah. And I'm, I'm assuming like the when, same when limited banners it. come out, they have the red currency. That specific that you have to currency. Use yeah. Yeah. So like it's uh would or I mean they're probably not the right question to ask, but will it always be red currency, or will it at some point most likely change to being something different? Pretty sure it's always just going to be red. That's yeah, good. Yeah, the red is limited. Is the limited currency? For That's the good. New That's good. How do you guys feel? Like, I mean, we talked about a, a little bit before about like the banners and stuff, but how do you guys feel about the gacha element of Toph? Because obviously with Genshin, there was, there, there was and there still is, I feel like a lot of controversy around how good or bad, or generally it's how bad the gacha system is for Genshin. How do you guys hmm. feel Tower of Fantasy's gacha system is? Do you think, how do you, and how does that compare, sorry, to to Genshin system, I suppose. And how do you guys feel about that overall? Well, one um, thing that we forgot to mention as well is the fact that the pity doesn't reset when you pull an SSR. Oh. Yeah, it doesn't. When, Which like, is um, great. Genshin, I think, does reset. And their pity's a lot harsher, I think. I can't remember. It's been a while since I played Genshin. So, the way Genshin's pity works, from my understanding, is when you're going through the multis, you're guaranteed, a, you're guaranteed um, an SSR, like, on the ninth multi. Right, um, you're guaranteed, and if you don't get whoever the limited character is on that second run around, when you get to that ninth multi again, that's when you're guaranteed. So it's eighteen multis, which, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and if you compare um, that to Tower of Fantasy, it's like eight multis, yeah. and it's a fifty-fifty shot. If you miss it, then you can just do four more multis and spend the currency to buy from the shop. Yeah, and I do know that Genshin does have a soft... I think it's called a soft pity. Soft pity, I, I yeah. Forgot, yeah, I forgot what multi it's on, but I know there's a soft pity in Genshin as well. I do also want to say, because we didn't mention it, um, for the vent banners in Tower of Fantasy, they have a great thing, which I'm super happy about. It's um, one of the similar things Alchemy Stars has. If you look at the Nemesis banner, whenever you pull an SSR on her banner, it's actually a 50% chance to be Nemesis. Oh, any so, SSR is fifty percent chance. And yep, any SSR it's fifty percent chance to Jesus. be Nemesis or any other character, which is great. Yes, yeah, so if you're pulling for dupes, that's actually incredible. That's really good yep. then. Mm-hmm. Nice. Okay. That's good to that's good to know then. That's that's really good to know. I guess uh yeah. next question I'll ask you guys. Have you guys spent 
any money uh and and do you plan to spend any at any point if you're comfortable talking about that is i'm not gonna force Uh, you guys to say anything if you don't want to i've spent a little bit like i bought like the monthly pack i bought the battle pass um when you first open the shop there's like a deal for like one dollar and a deal for five dollars to get like 15 gold orbs or something i think i bought that Mm -hmm. um and then i bought a couple of the the like mid mid range packs to do pulls for nemesis Mm -hmm. and um that's all i've done at the moment i mean like there's no reason to buy anything uh, in my opinion like until like a new banner comes out so if a new banner comes out and the character looks good and like a lot of the content creators are saying that like this character is broken then yeah okay I'll, i'll i'll probably pull for the unit but if I don't like the character's design or if it doesn't fit well with what units I have, then I'll yep. probably just avoid it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. Um, for me, I did spend, I did spend a little money. Um, but that's also because I just wanted the, the alternate costume for nemesis. But then I realized that I'm mainly using my created character now. So I was like, Oh, I'm probably not going to do that again, to be honest. <laughs> um, so yeah, like Todd said, I would really only recommend spending for the limited banner. There's there's no point to really spend to pull on the standard banner unless maybe you're really close to getting the, the shop reward pity and you want to just do one or two extra multis just so you can yeah. buy a dupe, then okay. But I would probably just chill out. They um they have like it the first time you buy like the packs you get like double the rewards, which is nice. So yeah. it's like you buy two packs for one. Yeah. Um but yeah, I'd, I'd only recommend buying some of like the the sale items and the event the event currency items because those reset. And would you would you say that the purchases you guys made are worthwhile? Do you think there's value in in buying stuff for Toff yet? Like, what? How do you guys feel about like mm. the, the the value? I suppose of what you're buying. I, I need to. Yeah. I, I think it's worthwhile, but I do regret my purchases. <laughs> <laughs> Every time I buy Treasure Cruise gems at any point, pretty much. Before I before I even pull, I'm just like, fuck. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I feel that. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah, like, like I, I did mainly spend cash to get Nemesis, but like you don't need Nemesis to have a good time in this game for sure. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, you, you don't, don't need to. They've, um, They've they've honestly given out so much stuff and like yeah. just from playing the game you're able to like garner up so much currency all yep. types of currencies and there's even the SSR selector so if you've been playing since day one like consistently you probably have yourself a couple SSRs yep. for free I would say so I think mm-hmm. I mean I think I am the token in that situation there yeah I'm, I have like three or four SSRs obviously one with them being picked. I think I've done like four multis or three multis on the Nemesis banner. I think I'm at like I think I'm a at pity for the the main banner. I think, um, so like I'm I'm right around there, and it's like yeah, I totally agree. Like, there's plenty of stuff to go around, and like all the characters are pretty good. Like at least for like the PVE content, I feel like or just the regular like story content. Most of the characters, even like probably most of the SR characters, they're oh, clear yeah. enough to to get you through like most of that content regardless and especially when you're doing a lot of pulls on the banner from all the gold nucleus and black nucleus you get yep. you'll be able to get all those srs to six star pretty quickly mm-hmm. and then at that point you would level them up and like those six star sr weapons are like uh, they're insane they're actually really really, really, good. really good weapons mm-hmm. but obviously when it, when you get down to the nitty-gritty and you get to the late game and you eventually start getting dupes for these ssrs they're going to be a lot better in the whole the scaling world. becomes just yeah. unfathomably different at that point, you know? So it's a, it's a bit of give and take there. Yeah. Do you guys see yourselves playing this long-term? Do I'd like guys, to. Yeah. You I think would, this yeah. Would be a, you think this would be a kind of a game that you'll, you'll want to be playing for like an actual long period of time or something that you just want to like pick up, play, put down, or would you want to see yourself actively like trying to complete tough raids and challenges and blah 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 like where your where your head's at i guess in I, that front. i have a feeling that it's gonna be like it'll get to a point where everything in the game will be done and it's like just doing the daily stuff every single day at that point i probably will like drop it until something new comes out for the game right right 
Um, but as for the early game stuff right now, I mean, the story's still going, leveling up, trying to grind for equipment and yep. doing all that kind of thing. World bosses are actually pretty fun. If you ever get a chance to do them, they're a lot mm -hmm. of fun. You get mm -hmm. good, really good rewards out of them mm -hmm. too. Um, then yeah, like, uh, like even like Carissa beat a world boss the other day and from the rewards out of it, she got a chest and the chest was like, uh, when you open it, you get a random SR or SSR weapon. What? yeah really yeah that's crazy <laughs> yeah, she only that's ended awesome. up getting sr out of it but yeah like it's cool you can you can get ssr weapons from beating world bosses and so you can really cool. pump out world bosses you just keep hopping yeah hopping between if, you, if you got a whole squad like yeah, if you got go. like a few squads going yeah you can you can do that but you do need the gold um decipher key cards to yes. open up the the yeah. chests at the end so they're pretty finite resource. There aren't too many available. I don't know yeah. how to actually get them. Yeah, if you have them, you can you can do that for sure. Mm -hmm. All right, yourself, Flame. How do you feel about longevity of you playing the, the um, game itself? I de I definitely like this game. Like, um, and I think a big key component to why I'm actually having a lot of fun on it is because a lot of people that I know are playing it. So yeah, I have like a lot of people to talk to about it, and I feel like once once like a lot of the people that I know that are playing it start to drop it, that's also in a way going to start to like drain my interest. Yeah. Um, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try my best to keep going forward with it because I was really excited for this game for a while, mm -hmm. and I feel like it didn't disappoint. Um, and looking and from looking at like what's to come on um the Chinese version. Yeah. It, the characters and stuff look pretty interesting and mm -hmm. there's a next one in particular i showed todd the other day mm -hmm. uh she yeah, was badass definitely, def definitely gonna want to pick her up <laughs> um but yeah I, i'm having a lot of fun and i hope that the game could keep my interest no i think it's um, i agree in all those fronts i did want to say i mean like again i'm not 100 percent, but like with the equipment you know like yeah, it's like oh, you can get a pair of pants put them on you know you get some extra stats mm -hmm, yeah stuff. the whole way of like how like if you switch between you can retain the the oh, upgrades yeah. i think it is so yeah, like so you can upgrade the equipment slot yeah but yeah you can actually upgrade the equipment itself as well but i do like that when you level up a slot like you you get you get pretty good stats out of that and yeah, like, if exactly. you pick up a new equipment at times it'd be like oh damn like that means i got to level up this equipment as well. Yeah. Well, you just put it on the slot and the slot, you get all the, the levels for it, which is mm -hmm. cool. So I think that's what I've been doing as of now, I believe. So yep. well, I think that, that's been like, that's been super helpful because you just get new equipment consistently. That's like better than the last. Like, all right, cool. I can just put this in the slot, get the stat boost that it, like, it provides anyway, but I, I, I think that's fun. No, like I, I kind of echo everything you guys have said. I'm probably more towards the side of like, I don't see myself playing this long-term. Like this isn't going to be like mm -hmm. a, this isn't like a one piece treasure cruise. Like you devote your whole goddamn life to it type, <laughs> type thing. But like, it's, it has definitely been really fun. I've been super like into it and enjoying it a lot. And I do see myself just consistently logging in every day and playing it. But I guess it's more an O to what flame was saying about once friends kind of stop playing it or like it kind of like tails off. It's like, okay, makes sense. I'll probably, mm -hmm. you know, do the same thing too. But no, I think tower fantasy, I think it, I, I would say it kind of lived up to its hype. In my opinion, I think it, it really, really did a good job in that kind of front there. So hopefully, you know, more good stuff coming out of the game from this point mm -hmm. forward. Hell yeah. It's good. Really from, good time. from the hype of Tower Fantasy to the, ugh, to the mediocrity of Pokemon. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, it was funny. Before we even started recording, like, I was said to Pappy, I'm like, oh yeah, I forgot there was a new <laughs> Wait, Pokemon, came came, Pokemon shit came out. Unfortunately, our resident Pokemon nerd is not here, but we're going to be do him some due diligence and chat about the uh, larger reveal of Pokemon Scar. I almost going to call it Scarlet, Scarlet and <laughs> Violet versions. That's their combined name now, Scarlet. Um, Violet. Combined sure. versions of the game. All right, lads. Right. How do you guys feel? How do how what's the what's the kind of just the initial like what's the what what's the feeling at? What's the mood? What's the vibe of 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 Scarlet and Violet at the moment? <laughs> um, this is looking like one of the most mid Pokemon games I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> I don't know about all this, man. This yeah. seems kind of weird. Seems yeah, kinda yeah, I feel that. 
I, I really do feel that like, too. The Pokemon, none of the Pokemon that they've revealed so far have really, like, wowed me, to be honest. Everything oh, but it's like a okay. dog, and it's made out of dough, so it's a, a dog, bro. I mean, it's Come cute. On, man. I mean, all, all regions have a have a cute Pokemon like that. Exactly. Come on, man. Like, nothing too crazy. Um, I think, I mean, looking at it now, like, the starters, they look okay. Uh, I really want to see their evolutions. That's what it's all yeah. about. Um, and the new, um, the new Wooper, I mean, that's kind of cool. I like that yeah. there's like re- the different variants depending on the region, like what yep. they did with, um, you know, the previous games. Yep. I-, I like the idea of that, you know, like the, the same species of Pokemon in different regions uh, evolves in different ways depending yep. on its environment. Like that makes yep. sense. Like, yeah, that's really, really cool. I like that. Mm-hmm. Um, and then like, there's that new, um, like evolution thingy in the, in the battle. What's it called? Like where they get the crown. Terra, Terra, Terra terrestrialize terrestrialize like that i think it is yeah i'm trying to find the thing on the website but yeah it's that that thing it's like scuffed super evolution it's kind of no, so, you know what i'm so fucking pissed off because this is dog shit like i get it because bro the 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 competitive nerds are gonna fucking pop off with this though you're gonna have some oh, like yeah grass terror type vaporeon that fucking has energy ball that like hits with stab and ding like it's like all right you gotta calm down boss like it's a <laughs> it's just uh, for me it's too much like i was happy with mega evolution i was like okay with z moves dynamax gigantamax was fucking cringe and now this is just even worse i think so i i'm not a fan of this at all but it is open world how do you guys feel about open world? Mm. I don't. I, well, I don't like it. <laughs> I, I. I. Yeah. Like supposedly. Uh, sorry. Uh. With with it as well. It's like you can kind of complete the story in whatever fashion you want. How do you guys? Oh feel about yeah, that's that that's a that's a complaint. Fucking hell. They said like, oh, you can complete the gyms in any order, but they don't scale to what your team is. So like you can go what? fight the eighth gym, but the eighth gym is like literally the like the hardest gym. Fuck, like, so they d- they don't oh scale my. what team so you I, have. You've just ruined my excitement for that because I was actually excited about the fact that we could go around the world and like beat things in different orders. Hearing that has just been like you know what this guy fucking sucks. <laughs> like it actually is. Uh, it, I don't I don't get it. It's it, so it, weird. It's like, it doesn't make sense. Like, like, there's aspects to it that I like. Like, I like that it's open world because, like, I yes. can do more things. It's not like the old Pokemon games where it's like, oh, this old fucking guy is laying on the floor, so you can't walk <laughs> past. <laughs> hey, you can't, you can't move, man. <laughs> um, no, it's uh, I don't know. That that's very much frustrated me a lot now because that's stupid. Mm. Like, why would you not just have like a scaling system in the back end? That's a very simple thing to implement, surely. Yeah, like even if it's a, even an if else statement. <laughs> Literally, Bruh. all it is is an if-l statement. <laughs> if if like, gym badges equals this, have this team. Yeah, you know, they don't uh, have to purchase. Have these levels. You know what I mean. And if right. it's like a, you know, it done. Like, all right, how about the motorbike legendaries? <laughs> Why do they yeah. even use the damn wheels? Why do they just, the red one doesn't even it runs around? Why the fuck it got two wheels? Uh, I don't. I, does that mean that we we get a legendary Pokemon I think it bicycle does mean that. early game? I think it means you literally get the legendary at the start of the game, but you can't use the legendary in in battle. Yeah. It's so fucking stupid. It's so weird. I don't... It made me uncomfortable seeing the red dude just run. I'm like, evolution gave you wheels. Fucking use them, lad. (laughs) Come on, man. There's just not a lot of positives, unfortunately, with Scarlet and Violet right now. Um, What about the the new raid battle system the terror the terror raid battles again it's like the scuffed thing from sword and shield so like this time around i believe it's like free for all more or less there's no like using moves in particular turns kind of just like you can just keep popping moves yeah that's what they said like that you could you know there's no you don't have to wait for your other teammates to attack like you just kind of just keep attacking keep attacking which I kind of like if they if the it makes the battles faster because that was one of the things is like uh, those max raid battles in Sword and Shield they took a long time to beat just because of the stupid animations you had to wait for certain things to work and you have to wait for the certain attacks to go through and 
at the end of the turn you got the animations of like different weather effects yeah. poison like yeah. it's, it's just, like all these stupid effects but if if it makes it faster and more efficient to just play the, mm-hmm. the actual game then yeah mm-hmm. i'm all for it yeah no i agree with that front like but i feel like it's still gonna be one of those things where it's like yeah i'll play it for a little bit maybe like when we when we all get the game yep. we'll hop on and like kill some kill some terror raids and then it's like oh now i'm level 100 like all right, <laughs> now, now i'm gonna go like sweep the game in like two seconds flat like it's a bit of a give and take there i suppose mm, yeah, how do you guys feel like about that. the multiplayer exploration factor of it that has like hop in a, hop in a, a four-player world you know just fuck about have some fun i don't know yeah but i wonder what you can do in that sense like, yeah yeah uh maybe if like if you're in the same overworld and you take on a raid you're automatically in the same party or something like that mm-hmm. i don't know um if you can like do double battles with people that would be cool I don't know. I don't know how it actually works having someone join you. Like, there must be a reason for having that. Because, like, just... I, like if I can just walk around with someone, it's like, okay, that's cool. But what can we actually do? Mm. There's not much we can do. I don't think. Like, it's, yeah. Okay, like, even like double battles is cool and all, but like, Nintendo already has a like glorified battle system where you can set up double battles anyway. Mm-hmm. So it's like you don't need to go through the song and dance of getting someone to join your world and you know, yada yada. But it's, uh, I'm just like, what is it? Like, if I go into the into the grass and I find a wild mon, is that like, does everyone hop in the battle with me or something like that? It was four versus one, gang up with this like Pikachu or something like that. Like, is that how it's gonna? <laughs> is that how it's gonna go down, or is everyone just gonna randomly watch me, or like, what's the what's the dealio on that front? So it's, I have um, no I'm very idea. concerned. The game looks dog shit. We didn't even have to say that. Everyone just knows. The game, I was trying to give it a little bit of benefit of the doubt, but after that trailer, it fucking looks shit. Actual dog shit. If it's this like, look okay. how bad the game looks. It's like, it's so depressing. Like, like you look at the map, like the map for the game. So it bad. Looks like, well, the world, no, no, like the map itself looks like really nice. Like, it's oh, like, yeah, so yeah, diverse. sorry. Yeah. And then like, you see, you see the actual areas in, in the game and you're just like, what the fuck is going on how, how did that turn into that it's you just like I mean? when you when you go to like a fast food restaurant and they make the yeah. burgers all look real good and you're when like, you actually get it it's like <laughs> it's hey it's wait fucking, it's like, it's fucking trash <laughs> it's like i get the game is on the switch so like they're working with limited but hardware look, but like there's games on the that's switch what i'm saying like really good how yeah. the fuck did they make mario odyssey and I how the fuck did know. they make breath of the wild right this is literally breath of the wild the way that this game is built is literally Breath of the Wild. Like, it's the same shit, man. Like, come and, on. And, you can do that kind of stuff. It's possible. And it's stupid because Pokemon, I'm not going to say it makes as much, but it makes probably around the, about how much they make. Pokemon makes more than anything, I would argue. Probably. Because probably Pokemon does. isn't just the video game. It's everything else. And that's yeah. what makes a lot of fucking money that's the thing it already makes so much money they don't even need to change anything yeah exactly like oh it's yeah, okay it'll, it'll still make money they don't care because they know everybody's yep. still gonna buy it correct and we're, we're all in too deep we're all it, in it's too like, deep it's too late it's like one piece it's like one piece treasure cruise it is it <laughs> yeah, is it's like we're in part. you're in now it's too, you, it's too late now you're in you know so it's uh yeah. like it's so like was, go for a flame sorry i was gonna say i was already skeptical when they announced that well well this is the second game free game coming out in the same year yeah so that was that already made me skeptical but now that we're actually seeing it yeah i do think they dumped all their resources into legends Ar- like arceus i think that in terms of i think this is just a generic next gen like oh you gotta kill the gyms and there's a scary evil guy and yay woo like <laughs> move on with your day but i feel like legends of Arceus actually had like a pretty decent story obviously graphics weren't everything but like the whole concept of the game was really well thought out in my opinion i enjoyed i actually enjoyed my time playing legends of Arceus. the pokemon battles in the game were actually like a little challenging as well so like overall i enjoyed that experience but i'm i'm very concerned that we're just gonna hop back in gen 9 
I'm going to fucking start with Fue Coco and it's going to be level 75 by the time I get to like the sixth gym or something like that. So like, it's a, ah, uh, it's annoying. Cause like, I love Pokemon, but this ain't it. This is not it. Mm-mm. Not fun at all. What do you, Man. which, which one are you guys going to buy? Are you team Scarlet or team Violet? Violet. Current. Yeah, currently probably Violet. I think so too. I was Scarlet and I was like, mm. as soon as I saw that fucking jabroni running around that, his legs. You don't want nah, that man. two-wheeler, bro? That's what I'm saying. I want the wheel. Why the, I'm still so pissed off that they just, they thought that that was a good idea. Like, let's, let's design this motherfucker with wheels and then make him not use his wheels. Bro, like, you can't do that. It makes the damn sense. Like, come on, dude. So... I'm not looking forward to it, unfortunately. No. Like, it's like, very sad. Part of me really wishes that they went back to, you know, top-down... Yes, I agree. ...all Pokemon I agree. games. I, I agree wholeheartedly. Just something about it, you know? Just something about it, you know? If it ain't broke, don't fix it. That shit worked, and it was good. It was fun. Like, the game... Like, I don't care about... I don't care... I, I really don't care about seeing the Pokemon in the fucking grass. And then running up to it. And I, I just want to run through some guys, get hit by a fucking Zubat 20 times again. Bring that shit back. That was hot shit. You know? I don't want to be walking around this world where there's like a fucking... But everyone's like, oh, but the Sapphire has scales. They've textured the mods. I don't care. The grass looks dog shit. Like, it's yeah. a... We're doing trade-offs here. We shouldn't have to do trade-offs in this day and age. Like, it, we really shouldn't have to. So, I'm not It's fair. frustrating as a as a like long time pokemon fan to see what the yeah. game looks like now it's just pretty upsetting to be honest and yeah the game is going to make a shitload of money it's going to sell really well but it's not going to be one of those games that i ever go back to which i guess in pokemon sense probably doesn't even matter you know as long as they make the money off of it they don't care mm-hmm. that's, you that's know, all but that matters like I-, I can't even think of a game that i've gone back to play in the pokemon series like I'm not going to go back and play Arceus ever again. I'm not going to nope. play Sword and Shield ever again. No. Nope. I'm not going to play Sun and Moon ever again. No. Nope. I'm not going to play XY ever again, personally. Nope. I agree. I mean, anything Gen 5 or before, I'll probably go back and play. Um, I can't see myself going back and playing anything else. Yeah. I think the only Pokemon game that I've actively gone back and played is probably like Emerald, Platinum, mm-hmm. and then uh, uh, Heart Gold, Soul Silver. Yeah. The, That's like the, the three games I've gone back and and actively actively played, I think, like replayed again because they're just fun, really, really good games. Yep. Because like even they fucked it with the Diamond and Pearl release, like the re-releases, like those yeah. Diamond and Pearl are so fucking good, man. Like so kind of, good. Kind of pissed me off. With and that. then those re-releases were actual dog shit, like a genuine dog shit as well. Like it's not, it hasn't been hot for Pokemon right now, and I didn't even. Before Flame even mentioned it, the fact that, yeah, Game Freak is releasing two Pokemon games or two mainline games in the same year. Like, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. And they just fucked off and it was like, oh, yeah, you know what? DLC for Legends Arceus? Yeah, you can wait. Oh, you know what? It's never even going to come out, to be honest, at this point. And that's... Yeah, what happens with that? (laughs) That's actually a waste, you know? That's a a waste. Like, I feel like there's... um, There's... That was like they could have really done some really good DLC for Legends Arceus, and they just chose not to. And I'm like, ugh, again, kind of upsetting. It's not a not not, not we're not looking too hot right now, ladies and gentlemen. No, we're, we're not no, looking too hot in the Pokemon realm. I wonder where they even go from here after a game like this. Is this going to be one of those games that comes out and then they're like, oh no, we're not going to have a new game next year. We're just going to have DLC for it instead, like what they did with Sword I... and Shield. I think that's what's going to happen from now on. I genuinely do. It's crazy think, they had so much time yeah. to develop these games because of Sword and Shield having DLC and stuff, and uh, the games are still bad. I, yeah, I think that that's what they're going to do from now on because it, it, it allows them to milk each generation for a little longer, and it mm-hmm. means they don't have to keep creating new generations because essentially, when I, I feel like especially when they make a new generation, um, it then becomes... that That's the new competitive game. So Sword and Shield or whatever it is has been the competitive game for fucking oh, ages. Yeah. True. You know, been, what's felt like ages, you know what I mean? Yeah. So 
now that they release this, this becomes the new competitive game. And they don't if they just don't worry about Gen 10, they they're fine then. They can they can leave this game for mm-hmm. three years probably, not touch Gen 10 at all, and then just like have this be the competitive game as well for that for that long as well. Bloody bullshit so, is what it is. is. <laughs> Amen. I did like I did chime into the intro to the Pokemon Worlds. Um oh, do you okay. know that they they're cutting Pokemon from the from the to- from the games? Really? Pokken will no longer be at Pokemon Worlds. <laughs> like it's a mad. <laughs> this is the last time Pokken's gonna appear in Pokemon Worlds. One of their own games that they've like it's like, ah nah, fuck it. <laughs> no stress, um, we're good. I'm guessing because of that game, that game really didn't seem like that popular. Yeah, it, it wasn't. Yeah, yeah, I agree. It wasn't popular enough in like the Western culture, I think, for it to really like get a, a world kind of stage thing. So it's a bit, a bit annoying, I guess, for for, for people that play that. Because right now the circuit is TCG, VGC, Pokemon Go, Pokemon Unite, and Pokken. Now the five games they're playing at Worlds at the moment. Hmm. Pokemon Unite, bro. Yeah, that game is still pretty popular, surprisingly. Did you guys play a bunch of that when it came out? Yeah, when it came out, I did. I uh, actually never played it. Yeah, I've never played it either, actually. I had a whole group of people from, uh, like, people that I still keep in touch with from high school. Yeah. And, like, all of them, like, got on it. So we had, like, a whole gang of people that were playing it. It was pretty fun for a little bit. And then kind of just moved on, you know? Very unfortunate. Yeah. But yeah, not too bad. That's it. Another... I can understand why I can understand why people would like it. I mean it's it's yeah. literally Pokemon League of Legends. And it's very simplified, I feel like as well. Yeah. Or at least yeah, it, it, it seemed like it was very easy to watch. You just understood what was going on more or less. Like it was uh, it was very easy to consume. Like it's a very it's very Pokemon for them to do that. Do you think yeah. Scarlet and Violet is gonna be a difficult game? unironically uh, um, I think it'll be easy but then the, like the boss fight at the end will be hard I think the, the I think the Pokemon League will be easy I think the story will be easy I think uh, all that'll be fine but like the big villain boss fight whatever it may be I think that's gonna be hard I would probably agree with you 100% would be my guess typically what happens like legends arceus i think was actually legends arceus was actually a little bit challenging I agree. like understanding I agree what you need to do yeah yeah you, yeah because it was and i enjoyed combat. it i enjoyed it because it was a little difficult a little yeah, at it least was a little bit more difficult than uh, than normal i suppose you know it made you yeah, actually like, have to think and stuff of what to do especially that last battle we had to oh, fight uh <laughs> the giratina and stuff <laughs> holy Bro, shit I, I remember killing that giratina i was like yeah yeah i did i did that i did that and, and so, then that shit come like, back yeah, it took me like three or four goes to get it. It was. So I'm annoying. like, what the fuck? You can't do that. That's bullshit. That's cheating. <laughs> That's illegal. Man's man used a quick revive, bro. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, it, that was cool. I, I enjoyed got, that. I got a question for you guys. Hit it. Mm-hmm. If you guys could make the game, make the Pokemon games like more challenging, mm-hmm. what, what would you guys implement? I would just overhaul the entirety of AI, the AI like battling system. I know that probably sounds like too much, but I would because I feel like the AI doesn't really pick up on what the player is doing a lot of the time. So it's kind well, they, of just yeah, like, it doesn't some, do much. There's some some people that I do watch that get people to like literally mod the, yeah. the games for them and they mod the AI to be better. So it is possible to do it. Like where they're, where the opposing person kind of like knows your team and can switch Pokemon in and out, yep. which doesn't happen often in Pokemon games. But if they can switch out into, you know, tanking a hit, like if you use a fire blast, they switch into a fucking Blastoise or whatever yep. the fuck, so they can tank you're like, it. Whoa, all right. Then now you're on the disadvantage because then you, oh, I have to switch out now into maybe like a grass type well, and give them you know, really obscure moves, moves that are not typical on, and on, items. on Pokemon like that. Yeah, items not more well. items. Because yeah. um, because that's what they used in um. In Brilliant Diamond, Shining Pearl, did they not like a lot of the Mons had like I believe a few of the Mons had like items attached to them that like made yeah. them a little bit more challenge. Like, at least like Cynthia was pretty tough. Oh yeah, Cynthia was know? pretty tough. Yeah, 
because like her mom said items and blah, 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 blah. Like it actually kind of made sense. So I would really look towards having, because it's it's not like the, the, the game doesn't know what Pokemon are in your party, right? It knows, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? So I don't see the issue with allowing the trainers or at least maybe like a certain kind of trainers. Like obviously gym leaders in Elite Four should just know coming in. They should be prepared for that. But maybe like, giving a like giving gym leaders and and gym leaders in elite four and the champion a pool of pokemon so instead of you going in you're like all right i know cynthia's going to start off with her spirit tomb then she's going to switch into the melodic and then she's going to have the gut like maybe she has like 10 mons she can pick from and then the like the ai might build a team based on what you have in your team so it makes it a bit more of a challenge run as opposed to just oh okay i know exactly what to do and i all right, i'll set up on the spirit tomb then i'll Blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, you know you're going in. Adds a little bit more depth to the whole, like, the idea of versing these, like, supposedly very tough trainers. Mm. Yeah, yeah I, feel, I feel like for the, the Pokemon League in general, I feel like once, like, and I feel like they should do this for gyms as well. Like, once you go in, like, you should be locked in. You like, can't go out. Like, I agree. Like, like, in the Pokemon League, like, you can, like, fight someone and just walk out and heal. It's like, what the fuck? <laughs> um, well, so I, mean, I feel like exactly. I feel I like oh, you, you should you should be able to like gain, keep the experience that you gain. So like, yep. if you do lose, you still get to keep all of that. No, um, I, I actually I honestly I do I do believe that that's a, a really smart thing to do because the fact that you can just like run into a gym, verse the trainers, like beat them. Oh, time to verse the uh, the gym leader. Leave heal run back out versus the gym leader, wipe them, and then, all right, moving on, next next area. Yeah. So, um, and Yeah, I think so too. I, I agree. I was also going to say another thing I feel like they can do, because, like, I know, I know like, the, the argument for EXP share is, like, 50-50. I personally feel like EXP share is, like, a quality of life update because I, I hate grinding. I feel like what they could do is they can just scale the trainers to, like, go with your Pokemon levels. So it's like yeah. you're not just walking around washing everybody. Or like I, literally yeah. have a toggle for it. Yeah, you could have a toggle for it if you want. Um, but I, I do feel like is, it should scale though. I the thing is the like if I'm from like a, I mean like again I'm not a professional programmer. I mean technically I am, but like <laughs> it's like speaking from like a hard, like a software kind of side of things, it's it's not hard to have the scaling factor. All you yeah. have to do is... Com- and the thing is, Pokemon has these really convoluted algorithms already to handle everything. So why not just have like an algorithm in place? It's like, all right, check the check the player's party. Get an average level of all the mons in the player's party and then kind of like use that scaling factor to kind of scale the trainer's levels and experience and moves based upon what the player has. You, you know, know it, almost, it almost feels like that the Pokemon company, when they're like developing and testing the games, it's like they develop it in such a way where it's like, okay, we want people to play the game in this one specific way, and that's it. Like, they're not yes. catering to multiple different yeah. types of play styles or how people want to play the game. Just give more options to do shit. I'm surprised at this point they haven't just introduced a formalized Nuzlocke mode in like, as, a, as a setting in the game. I agree. Because if there was a formalized mode, it would be like cater around the rules. So you couldn't like, uh, if your mon actually like fainted, you know, like it would run, like you could hypothetically say it ran away from you or something like that, you know? So it disappears. So there's no like, like, you know, it takes away, away all the guesswork of being like, oh, did I catch a mon in this route or blah, blah, blah. Like, you know, it would, I think that that's what really needs to, um, that really needs to happen at this point now. And yeah, that also gives credence to the fact that the Pokemon Company, they don't like Nuzlocke's. They hate it. They they don't like um, the Nuzlocke idea. Oh, I hate it. No way. So it could also lend into the fact that that's why they develop the games in the way they do. Like, they want people to play the game in, like, one specific way. And that's why they do it in such a way. So that that that's kind of annoying. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, but I agree. A for, like a formalized Nuzlocke form. Like you don't, you don't even call it a Nuzlocke. You call it like yeah. challenge mode or something like yeah. that. Or like master mode or something like it, that. Because it doesn't doesn't like Breath of the Wild have like a 
yeah. master mode kind of variant or whatever. Yep. Like I don't know what like what is I don't know if you guys know, but like what does that add to Breath of the Wild when you select it to play on master mode? Can't remember. I guess I can look it up. Yeah. So I'd assume remember. it's I'd assume it's like enemies do more damage to you and you like maybe you take more damage or like certain thing maybe your weapons break faster i don't know something along those lines would be my kind of like assumptions i suppose it says that uh, most enemies and bosses are powered up by one level can detect links approach easier and regain health over time and there are gold versions of enemies that are introduced which are stronger yep. there you go so it's just yeah the enemies are harder basically and that's like kind of what you need in a, in these kinds of games, right? Because there's not much else you can make challenging in Pokemon other than like making the making the trainers more challenging. Mm -hmm. Like that's kind of all you really need at the end of the day. Like if the trainers are more challenging, then it's like okay, like I need to think more. All right, maybe I need to. Oh, uh, should I switch out here? But if I switch out here, they might know I'm switching out. Blah 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 blah. Kind of kind of ordeal. So is there is a lot of give and take there that kind of needs to needs to be done. I mean, like it's you know you're kind of talking to an echo box this because I think I feel like every single Pokemon jabroni is kind of like in the same mindset. But and I I do agree with you. <clears throat> it's it's game freak. They're not yeah. gonna they're not, they're not doing fucking nothing. I they, do. They don't give a shit. I do also want to say I one of my other biggest gripes with Pokemon is the fucking rival. Like they make him a dickhead the again. Make him a dickhead they've, again. Bring him back. They've turned, they've turned the rival from a rival to like a literal stalker, like, like a friend. But you don't. Yeah, it's, it's like it's the it's the he, friend in the group that you invite because you feel bad for him. But when it's the, when you're one on, you don't want to ever be one on one with them. <laughs> yeah, it's like the rival should like actually be in the world doing things, like not stalking you. It's like, it's like it's like they don't have a life. Like in the old games, like. Gary, like when you rolled up, I forgot. There's literally a there's literally a Pokemon game where I think, like the victory roads empty because like the um, the rival wiped them. Yeah, Gary fucked them up. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> or something like that right. I I, I do yeah. know what you're talking. About. I don't know which one it is, but I recall it happening. Silver. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's no, no, there's like, no dude, trainers that's in badass. there. Yeah, you're just like, oh shit, like you're like, oh this guy, <laughs> this guy fucks, <laughs> this guy fucks. <laughs> you know, you're like damn, he's moving mad. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. Like, but now it's like, oh, hey, buddy, let's be the best trainers we can be. And you're like, bro, shut the fuck up talking to me. I'm not your friend. <laughs> I don't want to ever talk to you. Please stop talking to me right now. Go away. Yeah, man, we're both conveniently here at the same time. Let's test our strength. Like, no. I'm, like, <laughs> I'm like, brother, I'm going to fucking blow you out of the water. You don't even fucking know. Yeah. And it's lame now, too, because they make the rival take, um, like, the le like The, the weaker effective. version. Yeah, like what the fuck, man? <laughs> no, make it tough. Make the rival make the rival actually want to like be better than you. Not like, oh wow, you bested me, teehee, and like moving on. It's like, no, no, no. I need I need the rival to pull up and be like, I'm gonna fucking end you and like choke me out or some shit. And I'm like, whoa, all right, no, we're being serious. Like, she's getting real, <laughs> you know? Like that's what I that's what we need in this game. But instead it's like, aha, wow, man, yeah. you're so good. I was going to say, speaking of that, I just thought of something that I think would be pretty cool. Because you know how, like, um, the first gym leader, like, you can always kind of get an advantage out in them based on the type you pick? I yeah. think it would be cool if the first gym leader was, like, normal type. So there wasn't no, like, bias towards Like Gen it. 5. Yeah, they did yeah. that in Black and White 2, I think it was, uh -huh. right? Yeah, Black yeah, and White 2, okay. yeah. And then they stopped. Yeah, and then, well, yeah, because Gen, Gen uh, Black and White 1, they had the one where it was, like, uh... Like it was like a fire water it was a fire water or grass one. Oh Do you yeah that? the, and the, the first three, the three weighted dudes right yeah and i think i don't know if you could choose it or is like whatever one your starter that you picked i can't yeah, remember I exactly based, what it was i think it was based upon the start like one of the brothers came up yeah and said, i'll take them on and then I yeah mean. black and white two in your hometown was the normal gym and then before you left to go to the main region it was the poison gym yeah that poison gym still fucking gives me nightmares lad yeah, well, that shit was dangerous, <laughs> you know. So, nah, I don't know. I think it's a bit upsetting, but I mean, unfortunately, it's a, one of those things where it's like par for the course with with Pokemon once again. But uh, classic, I think it's a, <laughs> classic. <laughs> Speaking of classics, one of the best segue: One Piece, new chapter, 
1057. Uh, Did we talk indeed. about 1056? I think we talked about 1056 last episode, if I remember correctly. I don't, I don't know. We maybe. Oh, right, let me go peep game. It's been a minute. We haven't we haven't we haven't been doing GDP for a long time. No, I'm kidding. Was 1056 the one with Shanks? Yes. Was that him using his hockey and stuff? I can't remember. Least, that's the wrong episode. That's the Ute episode. Go watch that as well, guys. That's when I cried for about think, two hours. We know last we talked about ten fifty four. Oh my god! Yeah, yeah, no, we did. We, we got a lot of yeah. chapters to chat about. <laughs> we got, we got ten five five, ten five six, and ten five seven. Nuts. All right, well, how do you guys feel about what the fuck's going on right now? Oh man. So yeah, the ending of one was pretty cool, actually. Yep. Yeah. Fuck Yamto. Bro, I'm upset. I'm yeah, actually, I'm, I'm, I'm pissed. I'm actually team. I hate Yamato now. Fucking odd as Why? a cunt. <sighs> Why would you do that? I Why would Otto do that? I saw something interesting about about it though, because someone who was a native Jap Japanese speaker said that in the chapter he... itself, according to the roars, Luffy called Yamato just Yamato, oh. which in normally he'd say Yama O. Yeah, and in Luffy only calls people by their real name when he accepts them into their crew. Because like towards the end of like at the end of ten five seven, he was all like, um, "Oh, Momo, Kinemon, Yamato, you're all welcome in you know yeah. in the crew whenever you know you guys want." So I guess they've kind of got the Vivi treatment, right? Where it's like they're technically part of the Straw Hats, but not really part of the Straw Hats. If that makes sense. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, that's, that's what I kind of think like, Everything that was happening before that chapter made it Peak. seem like Yamato was joining. Oh, but I'm so mad. And they're like, nope, I'm going to go look at Wano. And be I'm like, going to go follow Odin and look at Wano because that's what he did. Ha -ha. Bro, <laughs> what you doing, bitch? Get in the damn boat. We're going you on don't want to see the rest of the world or an awe? We'll, nope. we, we'll, be, we'll be back to fucking Wano at some point. Yeah, I do I, love the fact they gave eventually. him the shitty. They gave him the shitty Jolly Roger in ten fifty seven as the huh. as the flag to fly. That one was nice. Yeah, don't mess with us, otherwise we'll kick your ass. Yeah, we'll get your ass. Um, no, Green I agree. Bull, Green Bull was a bit of a disappointment. Very. Well, in a way, he was cool because like he totally just like he just literally sucked the uh, Animal Kingdom pirates dry. Ao. Ao. Pause. <laughs> And, and then he's like, okay, time to time to get Luffy. And then he's like, and then Momo's like, nope, not today, Josephine. No, they're <laughs> beaminators. <laughs> like, come on, dude. It's yeah, uh... and even in even in that fight, like Momo's like, oh, Yamato, don't 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 fight him. Yeah, you I'm know, gonna take before him you leave. Yeah, like holy shit! It, like they made it seem like that Yamato was definitely going to be leaving Wano. Yeah. I was always kind of a little sus suspicious about it because, like, as soon as 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 soon as Yamato said, like, "Hey guys, like, I'm joining," like, it was so weird. Like, yeah, it was never like established. Like, she was always just like not with not with them, or whenever the Straw Hats were there, she just wasn't there. Other than that one scene when they jumped in like the the hot tubs together. So I was just like, for those like couple of chapters, I was just like, "What's like, what's going on? Like, is she coming or not?" Like. Mm -hmm. so i mean i'm glad we finally have an answer to it but i'm upset because i was really excited for her to join mm -hmm. yeah. i don't know i'm kind of i'm kind of pissed off because like it just made sense for like like she should have just joined like it would have been it would have been good like it would have been like really like it would have been sick to have someone like that strong and just pull up on the crew as well you know Otto really like fuck people up though. Okay. He teased Carrot for like five years. <laughs> Carrot <laughs> never joined. And now he's teased Yamato for the whole of Wano. Oh, no, nah, she's not coming as well. <laughs> like it's a, it's a really a travesty here. It's, it's definitely not the last we've seen of Yamato though. No, I feel. not at all. I feel like it, it would make a lot of sense for, for there to be a whole like, I don't think the Straw Hats will go back to Wano. But I think Yamato will find the Straw Hats at some point mm. and be like, oh, I've seen Wano now. I'm ready to go on an adventure. And Luffy's like, okay, <laughs> All right, let's get it, you know, type type beat. So 
what it about would, it sense the that. whole revelation about the structure of the country of Wano? Man, what the fuck? <laughs> it's literally a dam. That shit literally underwater? Yeah, that oh, yeah. was pretty nuts. I don't know, and there's a, an ancient weapons down there. And that fucking Pluton just chilling? <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah, that's kind of crazy. So that's a ha- lot. How did, how did those walls even get constructed? Someone's an earthbender. Someone be fucking bending the earth, lad. I don't know who it is, but it's kind of crazy. Know. Maybe it was maybe it was uh, Zunisha. I don't know. Maybe he pulled up and, and did some shit there. Like I think, like, do you think Pluton's like? Because obviously, I think it was like part like in one of the chapters, like somebody said something to Luffy about, like, "Oh, you're gonna do you want Pluton?" He's like, "Nah, I'm good, thanks." Yeah, I think Robin was the one that asked him. It's like, "Yeah, no, nah, I'm good." And do you think Pluton's gonna like? Or, or any of the ancient weapons are gonna like make their like debut at some point? Like, like, because my my assumption when I was talking with my friends would be like, Pluton would pull up in like the final war. Like, that's when, like, Momo might pull up to, like, be part of, like, the Straw Hat Alliance-esque deal. And he just pulls up with fucking, like, Pluton or some shit, and that's, like, game over. Mm. But, like, well, if, yeah, if it, Luffy's it sound like that, like, like, yeah. It seems like the ancient weapons are, like, things that are alive. Mm. That's the way that they word it. Like, you know, the ancient weapon's been been asleep for so long. You're gonna wake up the ancient weapon. It's like... And plus we had uh, fucking Shirahoshi... Is an ancient a, weapon, an ancient <laughs> literally weapon. a weapon. Oh, so it makes me think it like, n- like the Pluton is like a type of beast, but at the same time, Frankie had blueprints for Pluton. That's which what makes also it seems like it's confused. not, it's not alive. I don't know. It's weird, man. I don't know, man. Uh, fucking Otter's on Otter's on some fucking crazy shit right now. He's yeah, he's on that, demon mode. That man got cosmic here. brain out the wazoo. He's thinking too much. But where do we go from here? It's always well, that's the thing. same question. We don't at fucking end, have any idea. At the end of the latest chapter, they, they concluded Wano. It was done. The, so, the, yep. the curtains came through. Next chapter, and there's no break either. Next chapter Brand is going to be new. outside of Wano elsewhere. We're done. I did like the ending of like, before they all left, it's like, all right, if we see each other, it's on site. <laughs> like, if we, right. if, if we see each other on in the ocean, it's on fucking site now. And that I'm was, like, oh, damn. That was funny how when they were leaving and kids like, oh, you're going to go take the lift and you're going to take the safe way. Yeah, down. fucking pussies. <laughs> and it was like, and oh, it's, I bet. <laughs> it's funny because Kid was also the one on the rooftop that, like, were, he, like, teased Luffy and Law when Big Mom did that fire attack and they did the, they did the funny faces. Do you remember mm-hmm. that? Like, right at the start of the fight. Yeah. Yeah, like Kid was the one that taunted them into that as well. The Man, kid's really just a fucking ch- he's, he's, he's a, a joker. Fucking, he's a fucking he's a, the king top instigator. Yeah, Gold dude. For instigation, you know, he loves. He it. is a sh- he is a shit stirrer. He, he's a fucking shit stirrer and a half, dude. <laughs> he really is. That was it's, good. Uh, <laughs> I I don't know. I I think like now that Wano ended, I suppose. What are your guys' overall thoughts on the on the arc? Did it live hmm. up to your expectations? Was it like 10 out of 10? Was it the best arc in One Piece? Like, how do you guys feel about uh, Wano now as a whole since we've got the final curtains on the chapter? Oh, you go to fight. Um, I think I, I personally need to reread, reread or watch the entirety of Wano mm. now that it's all been out. But good, just good from point. what I know, um there was a lot of big revelations in wano not only like story stuff but just like character development stuff yeah we got to see a lot of great fights um and i can probably say that it's definitely one of the three best arcs in one piece yeah Mm -hmm. um but yeah like i said i i would like to reread it and then i can give a better judgment for yourself todd i I like Wano a lot. The high points of Wano are probably some of the high points in the entire series. The only mm-hmm. problem with it is that it has lots of, like, I wouldn't say boring moments, but a lot of low lulls. Yeah. When not much is happening, or it just feels like it takes them so many chapters to get to the next plot point. Mm-hmm. Um, but saying that, Wano also has the best flashback in the series. Shout out to my man Odin. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I agree. I agree. Uh, no, I, I, I would, I'd echo everything you guys have said with with Wano. Then 
Yeah, it's it's still really good. Um, it just it, the 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 length of the arc really brings it down, honestly. Yeah. Because like when yeah. you when you compare it to like Marineford, Marineford was a much shorter arc and had just as much of an impact to the story. I agree. So, I don't know. I, it's I agree with Flame in saying it's top three. Um, I don't know if it's my favorite overall though, but I I loved one, and it was it's definitely one of my favorite arcs in the entire series. It's so I agree. Good. I would, I would, I mean, I agree with everything. I, again, I think that Wano was long, though. Wano was very long. It, uh, was. it was. It was like I'm looking at the um, the chapters now. Like it started at chapter 909 and it ended at 1057. So like, pretty much 150 chapters for Wano. It's a lot of chapters when you really kind of break it down. You know, overall. Yep. Com- compared to like what Todd said about Marine Ford, Marine Ford was was 50 was 30 chapters and then the post war was like another like 16 chapters it's like 50 chapters total you know yep so it's i mean i guess if you count like the whole entire saga of the summit war so you have sao you have amazon lily you have blah, 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 all those kinds of things but like wano as a whole went like from 909 chapters all the way to like 1057 so like 150 chapters for just purely wano kuni like itself which is like yep. insane it's heaps know? that's a that's a long time Otto puts out what probably like 40 chapters a year on on average i'd say right uh, now yeah, it's i think i think it averages between i think it's around 35 so, so like that. just over so about five years for wano alone which is yeah. insane but like props a, to it's Otto longer for, for the anime too. Yeah, big time. Props to Otto though for keeping everyone so enthralled for five straight years. Like that's like, like I mean, like we're talking to like a literal genius about a literal genius, right? But like mm-hmm. the like the ability to be able to keep people entertained for like I mean for like let's let's like do a comparison which has no right to be compared. Where I I personally believe that this podcast is able to entertain people for the duration of the show, right? But we okay. film this podcast as, let's say, an average of two hours every fortnight. <laughs> Otto was physically able to keep people entertained for five straight years and well, keep, the, keep them in the conversation period. Is a is like an unfathomable thing for any story writer, I think, in general. To well, your 25 audience. years so, if you want to go from the start of One all Piece. All of One Piece as well, exactly <laughs> right. You know what I mean? So it's like, from like it's it's a really like, I think people don't understand the scale of being able to do that is probably once in a, in a, in a generation, if not once in a lifetime, you'll have yeah, some series like, don't oh, even no. get the same runtime as Wano's entire length. Yep. You know? Yep. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. Most, most manga don't live up to the amount of chapters that Wano had alone. I don't exactly, get, you know? So, and, and the thing is Otto's just getting started. Now we're in the final saga like yep. there's so much more to go now. So once again, Otto's yep. Otto proves why he's smarter than every other person on earth. I, so. I just don't see how it ends in five years. There's too much to talk about. There's too much to break down and all too many loose ends to tie up. That mm-hmm. It doesn't make sense to ha- how it's possible. It's going to end in five years. Yeah. It doesn't make sense. Like, if you take the 35 chapters a year average mm-hmm. over five years, 150 chapters, it's literally the length of Wano. You're going to repeat the length of Wano and say you're going to end One Piece? I doubt it. I don't I don't see that occurring at all. Like, but, I, I mean, think I in know. order to end the series and answer most things, if not everything, I'd say you need at least another, like, 250 to 300. Like, at least double what he's saying. Yeah. Do you guys think that Otter is going to like properly, properly tie up every loose end or just the major ones? Or like, do you think he's going to leave some things as a mystery? Like what's the, what do you guys I, think the vibe is there on that front? I I think there will be things that are unfortunately left mm-hmm. untold just because of how, 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 how many things we still don't know about <laughs> were coming to the end of one piece. And yep. It it is unfortunate. Um, but I I did want to mention really quick 
because I didn't get to say it mm. uh, as far as the last topic. I do, as much as I love One Piece, I do, I do still think it suffers from, like, I hate when I'm like reading One Piece and it's happened like in the past like couple of arcs where like yep. I'm watching them or I'm reading the main fight and I'm just like, can like can this shit end? <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, yep. Like I it gets that. like it happened with Luffy and Kaido. It happened with Luffy and Katakuri. Like I like I love the fight and stuff, but like it just gets to the point where like nothing like nothing is happening and then out of nowhere like one big thing happens and it's over yeah no and i agree i agree with that 100 yeah, percent. it I does feel like that, that i i hope moving forward we can maybe move past that but i mean i don't think it will because that's just how one piece is yeah it yeah. just makes I, sense yeah that's fair enough i understand that and definitely yeah there's just a lot of things that get more screen time than what it really deserves and mm-hmm. there's so many other things that deserve to be shown. Like, <laughs> there was so many things. Like, even just, like, off-screening the Admiral fight. I hate that. Like, the, the time skip. Oh, my God. Uh, bro, that would have been one of the most elite fights in all of One Piece history if that was shown, I reckon. And they just bro, like, oh, no, nah, it happened. It's, let's go. Disappear. <laughs> like, come on, dog. The black the Blackbeard Pirates versus the Whitebeard Pirates. Like, come on, man. I kind of understand it, though, because... You gotta remember that this is a story that's supposed to be told from like the Luffy and the Straw Hats' point of view, mm-hmm. and I get that they're not really supposed to show everything. Mm-hmm. Like I get like they showed like Ace versus Blackbeard uh, after Water Seven happened, and like while that wasn't really from the point of view of the Straw Hats, like that particular thing is important to Luffy in particular. Mm-hmm. So I get why they didn't really need to show Kuzan versus Sakazuki because that doesn't really affect Luffy in any sense. It doesn't affect the Straw Hats in any way. Mm-hmm. but it, for the for the grand world of one piece as a whole that is pretty important you know it so, matters a lot like, that. like it really does yeah. matter a lot though that entire like sequence of of events and even even seeing more backstory of the rocks pirates would be cool too and do you like think, god valley do you think zebek is still kicking no you think he's dead skis? I think he's I think he's dead. I think he's dead, but I do think that something very important or related to him is still still untold. I agree. I, I have a feeling that I, I feel I have this weird feeling that like Otto's gonna keep him alive or them alive. Um and he he's gonna have some sort of insane like port part I, and everything. I think, I mean, this is obviously a popular theory, but I think whatever whatever was related to Sebek is tailored with Blackbeard. And yeah. I, I also think it's interesting that he was able to garner such powerful people in his group. Yep. And I, I think whatever his secret is, is related to that because I don't see what reason why people of that caliber would just follow him. I do think... Um... Blackbeard's darkness for it has a lot to do with it. Yeah. Yeah. I think I could almost see them like Oda pulling a pulling a gum gum for it with Blackbeard's fruit. Where it ends up being something else than what we thought it was. Yeah. Like a lot of people have had that theory of it being like a Cerberus fruit or something like that. Which would be kind of interesting. If where it's like like the human human Blackbeard's like the demon demon or some shit like that. You know, it's the, mm. the contrary to what a human is. I guess the opposite. And then maybe like the soul of Zebek is in the fruit or some shit like that. I don't know. They could go yeah. in so many different directions. That would be crazy because that makes a lot of sense. Mm-hmm. Because you, you technically have the soul of like Joy Boys and the Gum Gum. So like it would be interesting if Zebek was like the, the polar opposite to Joy Boy. So you have that whole it dichotomy is, then. It is interesting because like now that like we kind of have a little bit of more of an understanding about joy boy i from what i remember they they didn't really say like if it was a person right yeah it was just kind of like it could be like a thing it could be a term it could yeah. be a person yeah. so that could also apply to maybe what blackbeard's fruits going on correct because it was very it very much felt like that joy boy initially was kind of conceived to be a person but it now it seems like it's like a yeah, I don't know. It's it's the way like that that the that the straw hat has 
like significant meaning because it but in reality it's a straw hat but i guess like the fruit maybe is the embodiment of what joy boy or a joy boy is i suppose makes yeah. the most sense there another thing as well is that we need to have a look at um the emu person like who, yeah, who the, the fuck, fuck is that about? guy or girl or fucking other who it's, the fuck that? it's crazy it's crazy to think that they literally could have never showed him to this day and the story would be unaffected mm-hmm. correct it wouldn't have mattered at all and who the fuck mm. got that big ass straw hat who the fuck's that straw hat for yeah um me damn all right todd d ski there you fucking go <laughs> <laughs> fucking it's it's been revealed Toad d ski yeah. Toad d ski there he is it's been revealed now it's over flame d us <laughs> yep captain d poppy captain d poppy it's time we're That's all part it. of the part of the the, the crew now oh i mean well, speaking of that i i think i think kid is probably a d yeah dickhead more like it yeah. but no i agree with you he has to he, he, he used this d kid makes sense I, I do agree with you i think he has to be i, I it would like there, there's no way there's this much correlation between like luffy law and kid if he also wasn't a will of d holder as well right it just doesn't make a lot of sense hmm. well i also i also it. think that that shanks is a celestial dragon he has to be at this point, right? I I think it makes the most sense. I mm-hmm. I think there's something right. to there's some sort of connection between him and the Gorose being a celestial dragon, or like him and Imu, or because how the fuck does someone like Shanks just pull up to like the world government? And he's like, hello guys, like wouldn't they have him like eviscerated within microseconds? Like, isn't that the whole plan? Mm-hmm. Like it's a he's a pirate for God's sake. He's a wanted pirate that has a bounty and is a, considered a yonker. Like surely. You can't just let that guy waltz on into anywhere he kind of wants to without him being of some sort of bloodline or nature, I suppose. So, I don't know if you guys have heard this already, but my friend um, told me a very interesting theory. I don't think he had it, but he like he like he heard it. But mm. so basically, it's kind of it's kind of in line with the evil Shanks theory, but like it's also more of Joy Boy. Joy Boy is the key to the one piece and he was telling me how like for example like the roger pirates right Mm -hmm. whenever like they were described like they were described as like evil like like roger was like a demon like Rayleigh's like literally the dark king yeah um and he felt like that maybe when they went there the reason why they laughed is because they weren't able to um like obtain it so back to when roger told like shanks you know whatever he did and made him cry he like maybe he told them that like they couldn't find it and the key was you know what's it called the fruit and that's maybe why shanks like sought after it and it's kind of interesting to think about if it was set up from the whole time because Mm. like for example shanks spoke to rayleigh about luffy like years prior and like what if he told him like hey you know i gave this kid the fruit He's coming, so you know, train him because like Rayleigh just took him in, like it was nothing. Like yeah. this dude literally, this dude literally swam across the ocean through the calm bell just to fucking train. <laughs> He's <out>. chilling, <laughs> he fucking pulling up. <laughs> and I, I feel like it would it would be super interesting, like if they kind of set it up this entire time, so they can call like Shanks can maybe come and take take the One Piece. And all the Roger Luffy. pirates are evil. Yeah. Like that would that would be crazy. To be that honest. would be a crazy twist, and but that would I be like that mo- would fuck up. So many people would actually shit on Otta and One Piece for doing that kind of stuff. Well, it so really it. would. It's like and, the same way as like the ending of AOT, right? Mm-hmm. Like everyone wanted. I don't give a fuck about spoilers. Everyone wanted wanted Aaron to just fucking obliterate the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> you know what i mean everyone wanted that and then he's like nah it's too dark or like oh no let's make it happy ending no fuck you yeah <laughs> so i think I, i'm very concerned if otter does that there's gonna be a lot of backlash yeah and I, I was gonna say i i don't i don't think it's gonna happen i think it's shanks shanks is a good person but i feel like honestly the more you think about it it a lot a lot more things connect <laughs> yep it does no it, it does and make a lot of sense <laughs> He definitely knew. He had to have known about the. 
for but sure. Why the fuck would he go after the fruit in the first place? You know exactly. what I mean? Exactly. You know, like yep. there, yeah. there had to be something and, involved there, right? And in that chapter, in the chapter where they, they show the flashback, they don't specifically say it like, oh, like, yeah, like I knew it. But it's, it's put there because it, it's implied that that's the reason why yep. like, he knew. He had to have known. And then now that Luffy has become a great pirate, he has awakened the devil fruit. Then he said, let's go attain the One Piece. Yeah. Yeah, he was he was waiting for that moment. He's like, all right, now we can move. Like, it's time to, like, it's Joy time Boy's to here. Now we can go get Joy it. Boy, Joy Boy's here. So the key's maybe here. Joy, Joy Boy is potentially the key to revealing what the One Piece may be. So, like, you know, yep. That, you know what? I'm I'm kind of, I, I, actually, I actually do believe that. Like, you know, it, it does make a lot of, it would be annoying if, if they, if all of them, like, I, I wouldn't be the biggest fan of it if they were all just fucking evil and was, was setting Luffy up to just get there. Like, they're all greedy and, like, setting Luffy up to just get the One Piece. But, like, I mean, if that's how it plays out, then I guess, like, I, I trust Oda enough to, to write it in such a way where it'll, it'll all make sense and you'll be like, okay, I'm still satisfied by this, by, by it. Yeah, because, really. like... Like even like if they're not evil, like they're pirates at the end of the day. Yeah, like, exactly. That right. was that was their journey. So and you know, Shank Roger was Shanks's captain at some point, and he could potentially just want to see his captain's dream fulfilled. Mm -hmm. So, but yeah, that I thought that was a little interesting theory, and I think it would it would definitely if that did happen or anything along that lines. I think that would probably be one of the biggest plot twists in like any manga. Mm. No, nah, <laughs> I don't so. think the Roger Pirates are evil. Just, just due to the fact of them saving Celestial Dragons from Rocks Pirates, that just yeah. doesn't. That just that. Maybe, if they were truly evil people, they wouldn't give a fuck. Maybe they did it with like a malicious intent in mind, though. Like they got mm. a, there was some sort of like reward for them to, to get out of it. I suppose like they did that. Like if we save you. We need something, or we want to know something, or you need to protect us, or something along those lines. Hmm. You know, so yep. maybe there was like a there was a back end to this deal that kind of made it happen. I don't know. That's mm -hmm. only thinking way too deep, but that's maybe thinking into the whole evil theory. But it does make sense. I at least I feel like there's. I mean, I do agree with the whole idea. Like they are pirates at the end of the day. You know, you can be a, you can be a good person, but like the whole mantra of a pirate is just fuck shit up. You know, you're on the seas. You're living your own life by your own rules. Like, there's no like, you know, you don't really listen or do it, listen to anyone or do anything that anyone else wants to do what you want. So, I guess as Luffy mm -hmm. puts it, you live freely, which kind of makes a lot of sense. Hmm. There we go. Good One Piece chat, lads. You know, you know what else is really good though. What's that? Our YouTube members. Oh yes, indeed. Oh yes, indeed. Thank you guys oh, so much for the continued support on the youtube member side we do greatly appreciate it if you head down there you can hit the like button on this video hit the subscribe button as well and then to the right of that there is the join button there uh as per usual we don't we, we would never ask you guys to contribute in any sort of factor you know your subscribes and your views and your likes and comments are all already plenty enough for us however if you are you know if you are able to financially support us that would you know that would help us out tremendously we want to continue to make the podcast as, uh, as amazing as we possibly can. And that financial support does allow us to do so. We have a bunch of different tiers you can support at as, at us at as well. You know, wherever your financial means can be met there. But I will read through these. Starting off with our producers. Our three GGP producers. The Lord Shiro, Alex Wisniewski, and Portuguese Sosa. Our perfect member of Brian, Kisa, McDermott. Our three great members of My Drunken Monkey, CS Wins, and Void Seeker, and our lovely five good members of Rion, Stump, Red Halo, Dr. Erection, and Wankerfella. They planned that. They had to have planned that. You know what I mean? So, but no, thank you guys so much for the appreciate continued support. It, guys. We really appreciate it. But from everyone's favorite read into everyone's favorite section, it is the QA. Mm. As per usual, you can send us in questions via our Twitter at GGP Podcast or our YouTube community tab. Some of our first question from Definitive Zach. He asks, who's the best Gen 1 starter? I remember playing red and blue on my Game Boy Color going nuts at school. And I've always been a huge fan, a huge Charizard fan. But also, who's your favorite starter Pokemon of all generations? Thanks. Keep up the good work as always, boys. Thank you, Zach. Who's your favorite Gen 1 starter and who's your favorite overall starter? See, the good thing about Gen 1 is that all the starters are good. 
I agree. Yep. <laughs> um, but I think Charizard. I'm your Charizard. Tundra. I think I think I am Squirtle now. I think I was Team Charizard, but I think Squirtle's just cool. So I think I'm Team Squirtle. I think. Charmander. Charmander. Damn. All right, you guys. I'm gonna fuck you both up. <laughs> <laughs> um, Man, but favorite of all time. All time oh, starter. That's actually a tough one. That is a tough one. Oh, there's so many good ones. I love Mudkip. I love Totodile. Um, I love, if I have to pick, I think I it might be Trico for me. Yeah. I think okay. Trico. Trico is just so sick. And the, the whole evolution line just looks really cool. Sceptile is yeah. awesome. Like, so I think, uh, I think Trico probably is my favorite starter of all time. Shit. Damn it, Zach. It's a tough question to start off with, eh? Uh, a... Yeah, I'm, 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 right now, I'm just going to say Mudkip. Skips. Mud skips. Where are you, Flame? Uh, I'm, I'm going to have to go with my boy Charmander. Oh, damn. Okay. Double down. Love to see it. All right, Fair next enough. question from the Lord Shiro. Another GGP producer. He asks... Uh, game freak has reached out to you and you get to create a single pokemon of your own for the next pokemon game only rule is it must be a single staged what kind of pokemon would you create okay let's do it as a group i suppose single staged mon what is our typing <clears throat> okay awesome. well we're gonna think of the concept so what's it gonna be based off of it's damn that's hmm. tough we don't have a dolphin pokemon yet all right, Dolphin Mon, I'm down. I'm in. Dolphin Mon, and okay. dolphins are known for being smart. Water Psychic. Or you could have it be like, what if it's like, maybe not, maybe not, and so so much as like a water dolphin. What if it's like it flies in the air? Flying Psychic. Well, that that would be pretty sick. I'm kind of in for Flying Psychic Dolphin yeah, Mon. Yeah, I'd be down. That'd be bad art. There you go. Flying. Yeah, we, done. What are we calling it, though? It's the question. Um, I was thinking, like, trying to think of, like, dolphin and, like, something relating to psychic abilities. That's what I was, I was, that's like, what I was thinking. Like, Siphon. Siphon? Like, okay. S-I-P-H-O-N. Like, that kind of siphon. It's going to get a psychic... But then, like, fin as in, like, the dolphin, dolphin. fin. Yep, 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 Psy- yep. Like... So P S Y fin. Yeah, P P S I fin. Yep, there you go. P S I psychic fin. <laughs> yep. All right, done. Game for that's a free mon. I'm just being honest easy. with you. That's a free easy. bro, this, this shit's easy. We, right. we can do what's the ability? What's the ability? Oh god, that's that's on that's on you, I think. Oh gonna... shit. That's actually a lot harder. Uh Levitate. Oh, it's a flying type. It's a right, flying one. Um No, give it like regenerator or infiltrator or something yeah how about that what's does it have a special move like a unique move to the mon unique move maybe some sort of like skydiving attack where it like uh, where cool. like it it like it skydives as massive damage but it's like roost where it like it lands so the flying ability no longer it's flying type no longer is active for like a turn or so or you could be like a whole lucha where like they have a move that counts as two types so yeah you can be like a psychic that. and a flying move there we go bro it's so easy man game freak it's not that hard game freak jeez Actually, get it right just get it right you nerds <laughs> Bring this thing. siphon see you in the next pokemon game done uh next question from at obsidian underscore steed they ask live action anime shows have been in the mud forever do you think the One Piece show can turn things around or will it flop like how Cowboy Bebop did? I love Cowboy Bebop, but when I saw the director for the live show change their backstories and made everything into a mess. Uh, I, I think the way that I'm like taking the perspective with the One Piece live action is I'm kind of just... I, I'm, I'm taking it a little bit differently from the One Piece anime. I'm trying to yes. like separate the two and yeah. just take it in as what it is and not yep. try and compare and contrast it to the actual uh manga material and mm-hmm. while we do know that it's basically going to be you know word for word the exact same uh i think people people are gonna hate it no matter what correct it, it all comes down to the to how the characters look honestly and like how the abilities are shown yeah and like 
yeah the visual effects yep. that's gonna be the important thing i think no i f- i feel that i i totally feel that i mean it's funny though because out of all live action anime to adapt to live action like one piece is probably one of the most difficult to be honest that's yeah like that's my stress or like concern is like how the fuck they're gonna make luffy stretch and make it not look really cringe yep and yeah. fishman and fishman is gonna look really weird and like all the one piece characters are very quirky and unique yeah, and like different you know like so it's a uh, weird yeah so it's uh like but i do agree with you that like i think if people go into it with the mindset of um if people go if people sorry go into the mindset of like disassociate the live action yeah. from the manga and anime and you watch it just as a television show like one piece of the tv show i think you're going to enjoy it a lot more than seeing there like oh luffy doesn't yeah, look as people, good as he does in yeah the anime. people are gonna say oh that doesn't look the exact same i hate so, it of course it doesn't know? fucking look the same you ding dong like it yeah. look, you know so i i do I, I i agree with you i think people me me especially have to just disassociate it from the manga and anime and just believe it as its own tv show and then i think mm-hmm. once you do that you're going to enjoy it way way more i think yep. than than what people would enjoy it as totally agree what do you think flame how do you feel about this the live action if you've kept up with it at all um i'm i'm not really looking forward to forward to it to be honest yeah cuz as we all know most anim- anime related live actions are awful yep um i pro i will probably watch the first episode just to see if it's funny <laughs> cuz mm-hmm. that's a good like, that's a good idea like if they don't take themselves too seriously as well and kind of m- try to make it a little bit more comedic they could also play really well into that whole one piece scenario in there as well yep um and I do have to say though, as far as like the casting, like CGI aside, I do think some of the casting choices are actually decent. Yep. yep. Like I do, I do really like the Nami. <clears throat> I don't think the Luffy's that bad. Yeah. Shanks actually looks pretty good. Um, I think Gar. I think I saw oh, Garp. Garp. Yeah, looks Garps so- looks good, dude. Chef mm-hmm. Zef. He's in yeah, there. Guys Zef. playing Zef. He looks uh, exactly like him. Did you, did you guys yep. see Higuma? I got announced as well. I did see that. I didn't. Hig- who look at bro it's the same shit like it literally is higuma like it's like the casting for his <laughs> character damn um, i mean shout out shout out arta arta has been like carrying the the live action on his fucking back for pretty much but like every time arta posts like a this is what this character i'm like wow like even like um genzo like genzo looks the exact same like it's 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 crazy yeah, you can just how... imagine it when you when you have the the uh the outfits and the makeup all done like yeah it's gonna it's look gonna good be very like it's gonna be very well done i think so i'm i am like yeah i'm, I'm looking at like the 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 big yeah, i was about to say i was about to pull that tweet up but like looking at the entire list is like they all look very bro, similar to their their characters Axan morgan that chin though holy <laughs> bro that that is identical Chad. Garp is identical. It's the same guy. It's literally the same guy. Like it is. That's Garp. Vincent Regan yep. is Garp. It's, you know what I mean? So, yeah. Garp, Zeph, Morgan, all look amazing. And the the dude playing Buggy. That's a that's an odd choice. It is Jeff. I don't know. Like, and I think the cool thing about like a lot of these actors and stuff is like they're not super well sound, known. It, yeah, exactly. I was, I was gonna say it's gonna sound really rude uh, for me to say but, like they're not really super well known. So it's gonna be cool if the One Piece live action does pop <clears> off. <throat> yeah. Because then it's like it's like this is also a really crazy comparison, but it's also similar to like how like Daniel Radcliffe and Emma Watson and Rupert Ginner mm-hmm. all like correlated to like their Harry Potter counterparts, right? And like the kids from Stranger Things, right? All like correlated they, to that. Exactly. No one knew who those people were. Now they're like mega stars. And that, like, you know what I mean? Like, so, like, if if it does pop off, then, like, you know, you know, like, Luffy is, like, Luffy, all the base Straw Hats are going to all be known for, like, for, like, you know, the Straw Hats they are. And all these characters are, are going to be known. I, I've i also found it crazy how they've literally just got, like, random Marine. Richard, <laughs> Richard Wright. Is, yeah, right, is, <laughs> you, you are, you are Marine guy. Like, you are the Marine dude. So, it's like, hey, all right, bet. But I have confidence in it. But I think you have to take it with a grain of salt. I think you just you yep. just do. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, it'll be interesting. Uh, yep. 
I have no expectations, so we'll exactly. If I yeah, that's the correct way to go about it. If you go into it with null expectations, you can't really be disappointed then if it goes poorly. Because it goes poorly, you're like, oh okay, that's that's perfectly fine, I suppose. But if it does really well, then you're like, whoa, okay, now we're we're cooking. So I'm looking forward to it. I think. Next question yeah. from Alex Wisniewski, another GGP producer. Two questions. If you could cast, there you go. If you could cast any actor or actress into any role in the live action One Piece series, who would it be? And secondly, the, uh, Alex asks, I'm turning 40 next year and I'm thinking about traveling somewhere fun to celebrate. Where should I go? Ooh. Mm. Um, I'm not sure about the actor one. I'll have to think about that. But I heard yeah. Aruba is a nice spot to go. Aruba, let's go. You could put up a little, you could do a little Europe tour. That'd be always fun. Nice yeah. little Europe tour. Wake up in Italy in the morning. Have yourself a nice little, nice little piccolo latte. You know, sitting looking at the like, you know, looking at the world. That's always a little fun. Uh, or just come to Australia. We can take you out. I'm down. <laughs> I'll pull, pull pull up to the pull up to the Ausland. You know, it's maybe, always a maybe he can go on one of those cruises where like they stop at like a lot of different yeah, areas. Yeah, there you go. You go on a nice cruise. Mm-hmm. Nice cruise is a shout actually too. So I think yeah. you should, I think a cruise is actually the correct thing to do. There you go, Alex. That's that part. What about the actor or actress? What do you think, Todd? That is very hard. I, I honestly have not thought about this as much as I thought. Like I, I thought that uh, it's hard. It's really hard. I can't even think of one. Yeah, honestly, I can't either. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's a toughie, isn't it? I think they should get Chris Pratt as Luffy. No. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to think of like big actors, like 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 just big actors, just for the sake of it, just for the sake of the argument. But I can't even think of like a big actor that would play a One Piece character well. I don't think any of them would. I, if I'm being sincere, I feel like there's like a lot of these big actors and actresses, like seemingly like. I mean, I guess it kind of worked in the Sonic movie, like a mm. little. I mean, like I don't know, like like it's... for example, if I just like pull out a random actor, like Ryan Reynolds, who would he fit as a One Piece character? Jesus, Ryan Reynolds can be fucking Don Krieg lad, <laughs> or like go. Leonardo DiCaprio. I can't even think of a One Piece character he'd be fitting. Uh, for. Leo would fit one of the Gorosei, maybe. There you go. <laughs> he can be a Garase guy. He can be what's what, what was Zoro's teacher's name? Oh, Koshiro. Yeah, he can be Koshiro. <laughs> there you go. Done. Or like Samuel L. Jackson. It's, oh shit. Uh. Damn. That's yeah. I don't know. Like that's, that's like, way too and hard. Nothing dude. fits. <laughs> that's tough. That's tough. I don't know. I mean, like, who, like who would play like a white beard? Ooh. Who need a big old man? To get uh, uh, Robert De Niro, <laughs> fucking Robert De Niro, to play white beard. <laughs> hey, you of... kids, eh? <laughs> fucking. <laughs> um, what about Liam Neeson? Actually, not a bad call. Liam that Neeson would be a white good... beard. Damn. That would be not bad. I'm in. I'm fucking in. Let's go. Not bad. Yeah, that's you, not DiCaprio bad. DiCaprio could play Ace. There you go. That's actually a shout. <laughs> Larry <laughs> DiCaprio's fucking ace gets a fucking hole through his chest by fucking Robert De Niro as a kind of it's fucking time dude <laughs> there you go but yes go on a cruise I think that's the that's the GGP answer to that one I've never been on one I've always wanted to be going on a cruise me too so you know GGP GGP on a cruise next year hold on that might be a shout <laughs> on yep. a cruise playing treasure cruise damn yep. hold on now, now we're moving mad but let's go <laughs> perfect all right, next question from Kakashi Bonji. They ask, question concerning OPTC. What kind of new feature or features in the game or, or features the game needs in your opinion? In my opinion, adding an, an item equipment or consumables to characters will be cool, like a rumble board, a boost attack or swords to slashes, guns to shooters like that. Interesting concept, but I don't think the game needs items to boost like your damage or blah, 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 blah. Like I think the game is all right in that sense yeah um poppy you don't you don't want to pull shut up equipment shut up shut up (laughs) shut up shut up (laughs) um i i do think like i i think i've said this feature like a trillion times now 
But I do think there needs to be some sort of like mission feature where it's like I send Luffy and Robin for like 15 hours and they come back and get me some rewards something like that. Some mm-hmm. type of like send characters out on a mission. If you send the right characters out, you get better rewards, blah, 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 blah. Like that kind of deal. That, that, would, that would be a nice thing to like log in. Like especially like when there's, when there's bits of like the month where there's not a lot of content. That's a great little thing to like be able to log in, send your characters on their missions, and then log back out. That kind of deal. I think um, something that the game needs, I don't know how difficult it would be to do, but uh, some type of way to auto-feed dupes into into the yeah, character. I agree oh, with that too. That would be beautiful. I, 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 I think that that's probably like the... That's definitely up there. It, that's the thing that takes so much time to do in these games. Yeah. Also, like... I've never had to do well. I've never had to deal with this for a really, really long time. But I know that favoring characters in the game is still a problem. So still a problem, big problem. Um, also, download all all assets function yeah, that, would be kind of nice. That should have. I like. I'm kind of upset that that was removed from yeah. a lot of people. You know, I mean, like, it was removed in general in the game. Sorry, but unless like, if like that was literally me. causing them server problems. If like if too many people do it at once, it like it causes surely server issues. Not like that, that many right? People doing it though, you would you would think not. not. I don't know. Treasure Cruise works in mysterious ways. Sometimes it gets top grossing. Sometimes it doesn't actually exist. And they know it's, people still don't even know it's a gacha game, to be honest with you. So <laughs> we're, we're in a weird world here. But no, I think I, I do think auto-feeding needs to be thought of or conceived mm-hmm. at some point because it, it just does need to exist. It really does. Like right mm-hmm. now. So hopefully something gets put up there. Yep. Um, Next question. What do you think, Flame? Do you have an idea? Uh, I was going to... I was going to say, as far as I know, I don't think there's been any updates or upgrades to this since its release, Mm -hmm. but I would like to see an update or an upgrade to the Gather Island. Yep, Yep. I agree. There's so many, there's so many ideas they could do. They could have like a reef, a refilling station for Kizuna potions. They could have like a training area where you put a unit in and it gets levels like it gets exp so you don't have to use materials to level them up like oh yeah so wait because they could they the could kizuna potions the actual i like the actual item itself is like a drink right yes like they should have like a saloon and you level yeah. it up and yeah. you get like yeah, kizuna like potions bar. out of it yeah uh, it's, that's that's be, a free idea that'd and be like, sick you know what you know what actually is really easy for they, feature they should add now with level limit break complete a quest your characters get the xp simple yeah simple. so simple yeah like that should be in the game now now that I have level limit break, it needs to be something like that, you know? So, yeah. mm-hmm. And that would also incentivize people to go grind like candy, like auto candy islands and stuff like that. Because then you can just bring characters and just have them clearing auto and then just passively getting like levels as well, <clears throat> you know, yep. you know, maintain that. Um, also, I feel like a lot of the gather islands could have been actually turned into mini games. You know what I mean? Yeah. Instead yeah. of just like clicking and just moving on, that could have been turned into mini games that let you like, like skill based little mini games, so the better you do, the better rewards you earn. Type beat. I don't know. More ideas there for you, Yoshi. You can take them, please, at some point. I I, I do beg of you. <laughs> Next question from at Portuguese underscore Sosa. Here we go. Okay, guys, it's that time again. Would you rather eat a whole jar of mayonnaise or a whole a whole tub of butter? Also, peanut butter burgers are near perfection. Try them, or you'll never know what joy is in life. Keep with the good work. Can't wait for the next one. Jesus. Whole tub of mayonnaise or whole tub of butter? Mayo for oh. me. I think this one's very easy. I would take the butter. I would take the butter as well, I think. I think I would vomit doing the mayonnaise. I think yeah. I would. See, that's, like, that's the thing. I, I fucking don't like raw, like the butter out of the fucking tub. Like That actually grosses me out, but I, oh I don't mind God. mayonnaise. So there there you go. like right. the you like the black butter? No, just any butter. Like I don't like butter that much. Really? I just don't like I don't like the flavor of it. I like cooking with butter, that's fine. But you know, like putting like butter on bread for a sandwich. How do you make your damn sandwiches? I just don't put butter on it. Go, oh, you're missing I out. <laughs> no, I don't I, I don't like it because butter has a like it makes also, things taste weird. For toasted sandwiches, mayonnaise is actually better, I believe, than butter. I've huh? tested this theory. Yeah. Using mayonnaise instead of butter actually works out really well for the bread. What the fuck? Yeah, man. I don't know about that. <laughs> I'm turning into these fucking jabronis. That's peanut butter. My man sounds like a mayonnaise salesman. 
<laughs> yeah. I, but I, I'm not even picking main. I'm picking butter for this one. So. <laughs> I, I, I didn't get your hand caught in the jar, buddy. Oh shit! In the, in, in the fucking mayo jar, it's covered. It's oh, shit. Dude, I swear, nice. guys, I don't like mayonnaise. I don't. I don't. I swear I it's not mayo. Up, <laughs> actually, I made a sandwich before the podcast. And I put a uh, Dijon mustard on my toasted sandwich. Oh yeah. Today, kind of banged. Honestly, yeah, Dijon, Dijon mustard ain't bad. Mm-hmm. There we go. Um. Peanut butter burgers. Look, I'm not trying them until I go to America. That's just what's happening now. We're going to do episode 100. We're all going to get a peanut butter burger together. <laughs> and we're going to try it. So there you go. You can lock that one in. Uh, that's a promise. That's a promise. Next question from Usher94. Oh! Oh, shit. Oh. Sweatmare JP coming in at the very the end. Knight, would you rather eat... You know eat- what time it is. You, okay, here's the time. It's the Portuguese Sosa question time is what it is. Oh, boy. <laughs> You've come in the perfect time. <laughs> Would you rather eat a whole tub of butter or a whole tub of mayonnaise? Butter. Damn, ah, team butter. Free. We st- it's free. Butter. It is. See, he gets it, man. <laughs> Easy. All right, next question from Ashra94. They ask, hey, guys, as always, you're amazing. Thank you. First, a thank to all the podcast members, the crew, which makes OPTC more enjoyable. You know, that's what we do, right? It's the vibes, man. Since it's not an OPTC episode, I'd like to know which Pokemon game is your favorite. My favorite would be Fire Red because the first generation of the best and I have a lot of memories of my best friends because of the game. Which Pokemon game is your favorite, gents? Hmm. Gen 2. Any, it's, which, it's, which game in Gen uh, 2? Uh, Soul Silver. Damn. Good choice. Well, uh, technically, that's, that's four. four. <laughs> get him, lads. Get him, lads. Yes, attack, attack, big attack. Fan. Attack. Big fan. <laughs> you don't even like Pokemon, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's, there's only three no. answers to this question. In, well, for, for me, it'd be Platinum, Emerald, or Heart Gold, Soul Silver. I agree with all those. <clears throat> Give me any One of those, those three, three any day of the week, and I'll, I'll play them. <clears throat> what about you, Sweat? Omega Ruby. Really? Ooh. That's yeah. an interesting choice. Like, uh, in, a more unique choice, I suppose, I should say. Hmm, not bad. There we go. What about you, Pappy? What'd you say? I, I agree with you. I think oh, okay. Platinum, uh, Platinum, Emerald, or HGSS. Easy. Like, they're the three pick best one, games. Pick one, bro. Pick one. Pick one. Pick one. Uh, right now it's like Emerald. Emerald for, for me. me. Emerald for you. HGWS me. HGWS just purely because it's a two games in one. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. And that's what makes like longevity content. Like it just, it was really fun. So yeah. Yep. Next question from KO, which we kind of answered already, but we can kind of run back through. Question for everyone who's played Tower of Fantasy. How much money have you spent? We did mention these a bit earlier. I've spent nothing. <clears throat> Todd spent a little bit on some packs and the monthly stuff, and then Flames bought a, a, probably a bit more than Todd has, is what I would, is what I would say. Yep. Yep. Perfect. Next question from Monkey Indo. They ask, probably off topic, but here, so your best mate is equipped with a metallic staff and has been chosen to fight in a Coliseum match against one of four creatures. A walking lion okay. with a sword, a gorilla with nunchucks, a big chicken covered in flames <laughs> and lightning, or a shark, a floating shark covered in its own teeth. You have to choose for them which of these creatures gives them the best fighting chance to survive. Who do you pick? Which creature do you pick for your best mate to fight? I feel like the shark's the weakest one. Because, like, the teeth are on the outside, and, you know, you can just... What, he has a metal club, right? Yeah, basically uh, a metal bed. staff. He's got whacking it. <laughs> yeah, he, yeah, he can just, like, break all the teeth, so, like, that shark's really no threat but at the end of the day. But shark's teeth always grow Compared- back. What if they just have a rapid growth rate and he comes back straight away? Yeah. <clears throat> I'm thinking... I'm thinking the lion. With a sword? Because... Because the thing is, right, gorillas, you're not fi- You're not going to win <laughs> against a gorilla, no, no matter what <laughs> item they have. A chicken with flames and lightning. That's dangerous. You can't even, you can't even get close to it. Yep. It is between the shark and the lion, in my opinion, for sure. But I think if a shark, is a, it's a floating shark, so if it can move as fast as it can in water... Oh, it's game over. You, you, you lose. You're fucked. You're so 100%. fucked. 
I, you know but, what? You've convinced me. I think it and is just the, just process of elimination. You, you know, I don't know. You've convinced me. You're walking shot, walking line with a sword, and it's a hard fight either way. I, but you know, I would probably take the shark because mm. well, one let's lions, go. Lions are the apex predator. So but is it a shark. shark? The apex predator in the ocean? Yeah, but sharks are little pussies. They're blind. <laughs> <laughs> They're blind. Bro, I'm putting you up against a shark right now. We're getting the budget and everything. <laughs> <laughs> all right, how about this then? Each of us are in the Coliseum as a team. We all have to all versus one opponent. Who gets what? <laughs> oh, who, oh, dude, we're all dead. I'll sacrifice. I'll take the big chicken cover. I'll take the chicken. You guys have to pick the rest. I'll, I'll take the shark. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> That's it. You All right, I'll, I'll, I'll take I'll take the gorilla then. <laughs> Talk to the gorilla. Now it's got the uh, lion. There you go. What about I'm fine with the lion. All right, zero. <laughs> I'm dead. I I'm already dead. Lion. I think <laughs> Knight has the best chance of surviving. I'm being honest with you. Everyone yeah. else is fucked. There <laughs> uh, we go. Uh, second, uh, third, last question here from J zero two, J zero two three one lion. Oh shit. It's the lion with the sword. Is he? <laughs> Jay. <Bruh. laughs> All right. Now the treasure cruise question. People complain no new content and it's understandable that it would need much development resources and effort for Bandai to create new content. What do you think Bandai can leverage? Uh, uh, what do you think Bandai can leverage whatever content they already had and made the game feel more fresh for players, especially new players? I think they can add some achievement tasks like using specific captains like V1 Whitebeard to clear certain content, like all the forests, Garp Challenge, arenas, etc., something like that. And you get 1k bounty for each achievement. That would make the game more creative and more enjoyable without mm. spending much effort on new content. It is just simply to add limitations of team uh, of building teams. You can say you can uh, you can say you can set your goal for that, sure, but it, it would be much more motivating to have players play it and not complain not complain on no content. I do like the idea of having like, so you have trouble with you having a side to like achievements and stuff, like a different kind of thing. I think that's, that's a, a wicked idea. I think Wait, having they did already. Grand Voyage. No. <laughs> 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 or even like no. what they should do is like, like whatever um free six star they give out for the rumble, like make that the achievements for the month after. So make let people get the unit. Yep. And then the month after, it's like, okay, all throughout this month, basically clear XYZ content with that character on your crew yep. to get bounty rewards. I think that's a fantastic idea. I think achievements is actually a great idea because like, it's an aside from Chopper Man missions um, and it it would be it'd be tracked differently. So it wouldn't be like, there wouldn't be time <laughs> limits on things. So you could, yep. you could clear like a bunch of achievements, get a bunch of rewards and stuff. And the achievements could like refresh or be added or along those lines so you can achievement hunt and like make, make the achievement like make the some of the achievements like almost impossible to like do as well so like it adds a little bit more like thought behind behind things as well is what i'd say i like that idea i think achievements is actually a realistic idea for that, Crew. it's a great idea yeah i love it someone sign this guy up get him in the team man actual bandai spy actual bandai spy it's actually yeah. yoshi's old account he's the lion with the fucking sword gonna chop our heads off shit Tyler um, Fisher. Oh, what are you going to say? Flaming? Flaming tunes? What's your idea? Say, well, as far as um, like things that they could do, I think, well, one, I think they need to stop killing off content like because they just kind of yeah. forget about it. Yep. They forget about it and like they just kind of let it die. Yep. But another thing that I think they can do to make the game more fresh for players is obviously they're always going to ta- um, favor the boosted, the new boosted units because mm-hmm. you know, they want people to pull for them. Mm-hmm. But feel like they can incorporate a way to like make it so you don't only have to bring them like you can bring like for example like they can maybe have like treasure maps where not the units like the new units are boosted but they have a like, classes that are boosted so you can Ooh. bring you can bring like older characters that still get v- relatively big boosts but you can use different types of characters and different teams so you know you can mix and do stuff with that. I like that idea actually. Mm. I love that idea because then that because oh, like for example in this treasure map fucking sucks. This TM yeah, was, yeah. has mm-hmm. been very hard to build for. So if you were like oh all cerebral units are like one point 
two five boosted right now. Like you could you could build so many more like teams to get around content while still getting a decent point boost as well. I actually really like the idea. There yeah. you go. Two free eye band flame. Fucking Bandai Spy Light. <laughs> <laughs> Alright. Means he's out here. Next question. Tyler Fisher. They ask, if you guys had to experience how an animal poops, what animal would it be? It could be anything. <laughs> a Ew. snake, a fish, a bird, anything. Except a giraffe. I don't trust those things. Wait, hang on. <laughs> this question is so the field. Is Wait, crazy. what do you mean by experience how it poops? What does that actually mean? What do you, what do you mean by that? <laughs> do you mean like you feel I, it? Yeah. You're watching it? You have to I think emulate you're, it? I think you're, you're pooping as that animal. Oh, I think that's what it means. Uh, I th- I took it as just watching it. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's why there needs some like, clarification on this. Go to the zoo. Let's go to the zoo, man. Um, I think it's like you embody the. If, let's say you pick a zebra. Oh, you, you become the animal. And you, you become you the animal, it. and you experience that a poop like the animal. Hmm. Oh yeah. What about um when hippos go take a shit, and then when they when they shit, they use their tail to like fan it off and like it it it, it like oh muck spread yeah that shit goes everywhere <laughs> Bro, that'd, be funny, that'd be funny as hell that's that's a wild name that's so wild <laughs> and, and then and then they just go jump in the water to clean themselves off gg what about oh like a chicken you want, you want to just pop out an egg <laughs> 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 this question is just this cursed. question is mad you know i'm gonna pick like a i'm gonna pick i'm gonna pick a gorilla <laughs> the most oh, damn oh no there you go <laughs> fuck it i'm gonna pick gorilla i'm gonna poop <laughs> like a gorilla i'll take the chicken <laughs> i'll do a shark mm, okay you're ready in the water your butt's ready clean afterwards you just keep moving yeah, yeah exactly Genius. slip and slide <laughs> Hey yo, <laughs> yo! <laughs> My man really said slip and slide for pooping. <laughs> right, you Todd. I mean, when you think about it, like the ocean already is like disgusting because you That's know. That's a great point. Oh, like, yeah. All those, all those sea animals and stuff. They just be pooping. They just come poop, piss <laughs> everywhere. They be doing god. They be doing demonic things in there. Yeah, no, I'll stick with the hippo. What I said earlier. There you go. Hippo, <laughs> chicken, gorilla, shark, done. And cool. wouldn't be a podcast ep without another final question from our boy Cody. Hey Cody, I, I said hey Cody. Jesus, what's going on? <laughs> hey Cody. Anyway, <laughs> hey guys, thanks as always for the work that you do, and a special shout out, a special to our captain for letting me slide into his DMs. Yeah, he did slide. He got in as well. <laughs> his his wife better watch out is all i'm saying a bit busy wrapping yeah. stuff up on my end this week uh this week ahead of vacation so i'll keep it as quick as possible not sure if any of you all have ever heard of the adventure challenge but it's a cool gift idea i highly recommend it and there's an 18 plus version that both myself and the missus highly recommend hey yo pause on that <laughs> big boy cody um <laughs> off topic would you say what what would you say is the biggest misconception misconception about where you live um, and then he says that all Canadians live in igloos. Well, you're wrong. All <laughs> Canadians do live in igloos. I've seen it. I've, I've literally seen it. Uh, what, what would you say for Australia, Todd? That everything's trying to kill us. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Or what that we, you know, ride kangaroos to work. Oh, no, we do that. That's that's true. We def- I'm, I'm doing that. Like, I literally do that every day. Save on parking. <laughs> you know? What about for America's? Mm. Biggest that New York, New York City is the greatest city in the world. Damn, it's a it's a dump. <laughs> it's Fuck a that dump. shit. <laughs> <laughs> right, what do you think, Knight? Biggest misconception of of, of America's. Uh, tough one, toughie. Because they're all true. That's a tough one. Oh, that bro, come on. <laughs> Because <laughs> they're all true. I only just clocked that. That's funny. Dang. That's all right. I don't know. It's like something like, you know, we're not as good as Australia because we're clearly better. 
<laughs> I heard Damn. that one a lot. Yeah. It's not, it's land, not land of the free, am I right? Hey yo. Anyway, next, <laughs> yes, next, sir. next question. Next question. Next question. <laughs> next question. Next question. I'm gonna get shot. Hey yo. <laughs> For food related questions, let's keep it simple, fa- simple and fast paced. Pick one, and my answer in the brackets: soft pretzel or popcorn. Cody goes to soft pretzel. Popcorn. What the fuck is a soft pretzel? It's a pretzel. You never had a soft. You guys never had that? Well, yeah, because right. there's hard hard pretzels. They're like the chip ones. Yeah, Dude, like the, the one you have at a bar or something like that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I understand. Soft pretzel like more doughy and like. Right. Yeah. So soft pretzel or what? Or popcorn. Oh, popcorn, easy. Yeah, I'd popcorn. go popcorn. Uh, nachos oh, or tacos? He picked tacos. nachos. Oh. Tacos. This is Ta- so hard. Taco. I think I'm gonna go nachos. I think they're both good. Quick, I, quick, quick side, go, quick go. side question. Uh, um, hard shell or soft shell taco? Soft. Hard. I think hard, I'm team uh, hard shell. Pause. I, I I've actually came to <laughs> like soft soft shell pause. There you go. I mean so both we're, are we're, good. Let's be real. I think we've split on every question except the popcorn one so far. It's not good. <laughs> uh, iced drink versus hot drink. He says iced. Ice. Ice. Depends. Yeah, it, it does, does depend. But if you had to pick one, what would you pick? I'm, t- I'm taking coffee, so ice. <laughs> uh, fuck. I think I'm going to uh, go iced as well for yeah, myself. Yeah. There we go. Back on the same page. Salsa or sour cream? He goes sour cream. Sour, sour cream. cream. Salsa. Oh, I'm salsa, I think, as well. Damn, split again. Mm. Apolo- and again, apologies for the shorter than usual message. Much love as always, fellas. Dessert tier list is around 43% done. So expect Damn. that in the nearest future, your boy Cody in Canada. Well, we look forward to putting on our Michelin star hats once again to <laughs> delve into the realm of, of desserts. But thank you for that, Cody. And as a matter of fact, that wraps us up for another episode of the Good Great Perfect podcast, episode 74. We are closing in on that three quarters of a century milestone. It's a very weird way to word that. 75 eps. We're looking forward to that. And I don't know if you guys thought I would forget because I definitely didn't forget until now. But just remembering it because <laughs> it's our anniversary. Yeah. Oh, tomorrow, actually. Of the oh. day of this recording, it's our anniversary tomorrow. Three years creating Damn. GGP it's been. Uh, it's, it's, it's been, been quite incredible. I think I, I'm, I'll be for one to say that I didn't expect things to go as well as they have been for GGP. I kind of wasn't anticipating the amount of success that we, we would achieve creating this podcast, but I'm, I'm privileged and and I love it. You know, it's a very enjoyable thing to do every fortnight. And we, you know, I think I speak for myself and saying that like, I, I, I'm super keen to keep us going for as long as we possibly can yeah that's right you do speak for yourself amen brother yeah. <laughs> is, this, is, is this where the three of you, is this where the three of you like we're out it's it we're done this is the last step <laughs> we're out geez. but uh no three years of ggp what would you guys say is your favorite moment in those three years so far i'm putting you guys on the spot here but um get the gums out that has to be the most yeah. elite moment <laughs> in hilarious history. <laughs> this man really said Suru get the gums out and it changed how everyone saw GGP for the rest of their fucking lives and how they saw Suru as well so the, uh, the Nick the Nick and Chris podcast was good yeah I think um, if I'm talking about best videos I would say the Nick and Chris episode where they just like basically bounced off each other's ideas and just kept going was was also um was really really good is what I'd say um yeah. What's um, one? The award show for me, for me is what I'd say as well. Yeah, it was also incredible. I was gonna say for me since I I haven't been here the full three years, but one of my favorite moments was when um we were doing the award show and then we just all popped up with um dress shirts. <laughs> we were dressed up, ready to go. <laughs> Everyone had b- b- button down and shit like that too. Everyone was ready to give out some awards. So no, I think that was sick. I would say I would say if Todd saying Nick and Chris, Ep, I would definitely say the award show for me. A lot of effort into that, but I think it turned out better than i could have expected as well overall what would you say knight what was your favorite moment or favorite episode video we've done uh i don't know i think the 
I hate to say it because fuck that guy, but I think the stump one was pretty fun because <laughs> yeah, if yeah, we fuck stump. Met someone, yeah, fuck that guy. But I don't know, like it was like fun just because he was like one of the only guests so far who, uh, like, even like after the episode, like, I like talk with him and like I would be in his streams a lot and shit afterwards. Yeah. So that was yeah, I like that, like, because I was able to make like a new buddy i guess but yeah mm -hmm. so, i make a new say, buddy yeah but fuck that guy yeah but that guy yeah. fucking stinks but <laughs> yep. yeah fuck that guy bro. Okay. i will say probably like one of my other i think one of the more underrated episodes i uh, rest in peace rye but the synchronization ep episode 48 like three mm. hours and 20 minutes long of us just devolving into like the sync and how that was gonna all pan out and stuff right i, I would say that that was a crazy good discussion i think in in terms of us um i think we did a really good job on that episode there but uh yeah three years of ggp hoping to continue going on um but yeah that's about it with that being said ladies and gentlemen i've been captain poppy flame knight and todd i didn't do the outro shit i'm forgetting everything i need to do as per usual if you enjoyed today's episode make sure you go down there hit the subscribe button helps you out a great deal hit the like button also comment as well and if uh, if you have the financial mean please do join us as a ggp member it would greatly help us out a lot but you can head into the description. You can go to our link tree link. That is L-I-N-K-T-R dot E-E forward slash good, great, perfect. You can find all of our social media platforms there on Twitter at GGP Podcast. You can also find us on anchor.fm forward slash good, great, perfect. We can find us on all the major social media platforms. Wait, that's not right. All the major podcasting platforms being Anchor, uh, anchor.fm forward slash google perfect i think i already said that anyway we'll move on and you can also find us on spotify apple Podcasts, and google Podcasts as well if you enjoy us as co-hosts as hosts as individuals make sure you keep scrolling in the description down there and you go follow and you know subscribe and do all that kind of fun stuff on everyone's social media platforms that being at flamevious at nightmare jp and at toadsky and myself at captain poppy but without further ado gentlemen i have been captain poppy flame knight and todd Thank you for listening to another episode. I'll tell you guys next time. Peace.